through the authentic knowledge and through the shiuk alhamdulillah that we have at al Maghrib Institute. Um, I was just mentioning to the, um, so I can't share this thing. Someone just messaged about the Zoom link. If you can please just uh, direct them to register for Ramadan 360 or share the YouTube link inshallah for them. Uh, that would be awesome. I'll share that YouTube with, link with you in just a second to make it easy for you inshallah. Um, but yes, our fatwa nights are meant to give you that confidence in your uh, daily uh, kind of worship. And if we have the time, if we have the ability, if we have the capacity to also, uh, you know, kind of answer some of the questions that we've got remaining on the Ramadan 360. Now, remember, we've had 14 topics so far that we've covered. We'd, we've covered from the very beginning, from the top, sincerity, God consciousness, humility, submission, remembrance, repentance, gratitude, reliance, patience, leadership, trust, conviction, and knowledge. And today we're going to cover the topic of courage right after Fatwa night with our daily Ramadan 360 programming, continuing as always with Sheikh Abdel Nasser Jangda. So stick around. It's been a marathon of a day and it's going to continue inshallah uh, until our regularly scheduled end time inshallah about 6.15 ish EST. Again, if you need to step away or anything like that, you guys are welcome to do so. But I see mashallah, you guys slowly joining us, warming up, getting on, on screen for the couple of you who joined me on screen. Hajra and Ragad, shout out to you guys for your consistency and make it heavy on your skill. I mean, um, but Jazakum for making time to be with us. Now for the Fatwa Nights, just a couple of reminders or just a bit of housekeeping. Um, we do the Fatwa Nights as kind of a, a, a through a Q&A form in your student portal to try to be as fair as possible um, so that folks who maybe are in different time zones aren't able to make it for the beginning or the end of the session or anything like that. They are able to submit their questions ahead of time and we do it uh, as fairly as we can by making it so that you have to submit your question and we take the questions in order. Um, now, if a question has been answered already in a previous week, we typically won't take it again um, unless there's a, a specific unique clarification or uh, it's relevant or it's being asked quite a bit, meaning that there's a lot of people who are still confused on that topic. Um, last week's Fatwa Night is already up on your student portal. Uh, you can watch the recording through the recording section, which um, I know we had a couple of people who were asking about that again last um, you know, Fatwa Night Q&A. So hopefully you guys got a chance. Is there anyone who's in the chat who doesn't know where to find the recordings? Let me know. If, if there is somebody, we'll do it just for you. Inshallah, I'll quickly share my screen to make sure that you can access it and you know how to find it. Um, otherwise, inshallah, we'll continue as planned. And I see folks are still joining. Welcome, welcome. Um, Adam, Ali, Nasra, um, Chali, I think it is Hannah, Suri, welcome back. Aretha, Wajia, everyone who's made time to be with us, alhamdulillah, for today's fatwa night. Again, I know it's an additional program. It's an optional program on top of your Ramadan 360 sessions, but it's great because even reading through the questions, I was like, I think I practice, practice this correctly. I think I know this, but I'm not 100% sure now that this person worded this very specific way and I got to make sure that I get the answer and I'm listening in from, with Sheikh Walid today. So Alhamdulillah, thank you to you all for making sure that you're submitting uh, such uh, you know relevant daily uh, you know questions, Alhamdulillah, that affect everyone's daily kind of practice of the deen. Um, I know a lot of these questions cover things like the fiqh of salah, uh, fiqh of Ramadan, fiqh of fasting and zakah. And Alhamdulillah, the good thing about Al-Maghrib is that we have in-depth classes on these very topics to make sure that we tackle them as thoroughly as possible. This Q&A, because of limited time, we may not get into the nitty gritty and we may not be able to answer every single question just because it might need more dedicated time and attention. Sheikh Walid Lassim is very generous with his time. He's very thorough in trying to get as, as detailed and as clear of a response to the listener as possible. And that's kind of the blessing, alhamdulillah, again, of having uh, a really well-educated shiuk who are also in tune with the needs of the audience in the West and able to kind of speak on your level alhamdulillah so we're going to do our very best we're definitely not going to, be able to get through all the questions just because for the sake of time we're sitting at a hundred something questions now and i know we won't have that many minutes However, if you have not had a chance yet to submit your questions, please feel free to do so. Uh, it could be that, you know, questions have been submitted that were already answered that are not on topic or anything like that. So you'll definitely has op have opportunities to get those answered. Um, I want to shout out before we formally begin the amazing folks that make Ramadan 360 possible year after year. Uh, and this year, of course, we have in the US HHRD. In the UK, we have Forgotten Women. And in Canada, we have Islamic Relief. Those are our charity partners. Please support them generously throughout the month of Ramadan uh, and keep Keep them in your eyes as well. I know distribution of aid is a very difficult and a and a, you know Subhanallah we've seen through our, our our brothers and sisters in Palestine and Gaza a really dangerous task at times. So may Allah make it easy and keep them in their in His protection. Amin. 
with that said, uh, please just a reminder, if you're submitting questions, please only submit it to the, the Q and a form in your student portal. That is where we're going to be taking the questions from to answer. Sometimes if there's a quick clarification that you need here in the chat, or there's something like, you know, the Sheikh has just responded or answered a question, but something is not a hundred percent clear. You're welcome to drop that in the chat, but the full question that you're submitting, please make sure it's clear. It's concise. Uh, it's, it's easy to understand with its grammar and, and the use of English language and just submit it to the Q and a form. And that I'm just dropping here for you in the chat. Um, and if people are coming in uh, throughout the session, you guys are kind of pro students. You guys know how the drill works, you know exactly what, what to do. So if you see somebody who's a little confused or who's coming in, feel free to please to, to answer their questions, to assist them uh, and to get that little extra ajr, inshallah, throughout your day. And I know Sheikh Walid, alhamdulillah, has joined us, is with us and ready to go, inshallah, for today's fatwa night. Once again, this is our second session. We've got the first one recorded and we have many more opportunities for you as well to, to get your questions answered on the fiqh of Ramadan and all the kind of elements of ibadah that you are going to that you're doing throughout this blessed month um with that said welcome to the screen uh, uh our dear president sheikh walid basuni assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah sheikh how are you doing this fine wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh alhamdulillah i'm doing great alhamdulillah um recovering from a long travel i i, oh, I so traveled to egypt um for less than 24 hours and oh. came back on uh, friday uh, but alhamdulillah, it was good. Quick uh, trip. I had something urgent there. Alhamdulillah. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for everybody. Ameen. But uh, I am um, good to go, ready. I am looking forward for our fatwa night. Um, it's an opportunity for me to hear from uh, all of our beloved brothers and sisters. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala first, um, since this is my first time to meet you guys on the Maghrib platform in this Ramadan, after the fundraising yesterday, two days ago, I guess. Um, I want to say that it is my pleasure always to be here and I ask Allah SWT to give me the strength and the ability to be able to meet you, share with you um, uh, whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have blessed me with knowledge, uh, experience, and also to learn from you and to benefit from your points, questions. Um, and before I start, I want to say that one of the great things that we care for in, during the month of Ramadan Make sure that is it clear. My the sounds clear. Hafsa, everything's yes. good. Yes, Alhamdulillah. Okay. Um, um, one of the things that we care about in Ramadan is Al Quran, because Al Quran was revealed in the month of Ramadan. شهر رمضان الذي أنزل فيه القرآن. Allah says, the month of Ramadan where Al Quran was sent out. The beginning of the revelation of the Quran started in the month of Ramadan, and uh, there is an act of worship that many people don't pay attention to it. And they don't even sometimes realize it is an act of worship in itself, which is listening to the Quran. And it is sunnah. The Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said to Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, read to me. He said, Ya Rasulullah, I read to you. And you're the one who received the revelation. You hear it from Jibreel. You want to hear it from me? Then he said, yes. You're the one who recited the Quran for us. Then he said, yes, but I like to hear it from someone else other than me. I would like to hear it from someone else other than me. That's the point, that you would like to hear the Qur'an from someone else other than your own reading. And that's in itself a sunnah. And um, it has a great impact on the person, an opportunity to reflect. And it was said that uh, some people put it, Shaykh Ibn I think, that they said that the reward of listening to the Qur'an is equal to the reward of reading the Qur'an. I'm not sure how authentic this fatwa yani, is uh, that we said that, but no doubt there is a great reward of listening to the Quran. But I don't believe they are the same as reading the Quran. Uh, one, it is reward because it's sunnah. Number two, uh, it's reward because Imam Ahmad rahimahullah reported in his Musnad, uh, the hadith of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, that whoever listened to a verse from the Quran, kutibat lahu hasanatun muda'afa. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give him a multiple reward. وَمَنْ قَرَأَ حَرْفٌ مِّنْ كِتَابِ اللَّهِ And if you read a letter, one, uh, يعني, one verse, or I am in kitab Allah, a verse from I am in kitab Allah, it will be a light for you in the Day of Judgment. كَانَتْ لَهُ نُورًا يَوْمَ الْقِيَامِ And in Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, من قرأ حرفا من كتاب الله كانت له به عشر حسنات 
if you read one letter, it's 10 rewards. Alif, Lam, Mim. Alif, one letter. Lam, one letter. Mim, Lam, letter. But if you listen and you read with the reciter, no doubt it is double reward. But some people even make khatmah as-sama. Khatmah al-Qur'an by listening to the Qur'an, not by reading. So they, they put the YouTube, uh, the favorite qari, he read the whole entire Qur'an and they just listen to it. And I'm saying this also because some people don't understand Arabic, but they love listening to the Qur'an. And that will be a reward for you, just listening to the Qur'an itself in the Salah or outside the Salah. And it's interesting to notice the verses in the Quran that associated Al-Quran, the recitation of the Quran, and the crying, or the people who cry while Al-Quran is recited. Okay? The verses that talk about this kind of uh, state when a person in tears and they're humble, their, their hearts are trembling and and, and and moved, it always referred to people listening to the Quran, not people reading the Quran. In Surah Al-Isra. Those who have been giving knowledge before, when the Quran is recited to them, they fall on their faces making sujood. وَيَقُولُونَ سُبْحَانَ رَبِّنَا إِنْ كَانَ وَعْدُ رَبِّنَا لَمَفْعُولًا وَيَخِرُّونَ لِلْأَذْقَانِ يَبْكُونَ وَيَزِيدَهُمْ خُشُوعًا That they fall into their face making sujood and they, while they are crying, and it increases their khushu'ah. أولئك الذين أنعم الله عليهم في سورة مريم من النبيين من ذرية آدم ومن من حملنا مع نوح ومن ذرية إبراهيم وإسرائيل ومن من هدينا واجتبينا This Allah have chosen This Allah have guided إذا تتلى عليهم آيات الرحمن خروا سجدا وبكيا When the verses of الرحمن recited to them they fall on their faces while they're making sujood, and yani making sujood while they are crying. So, and many verses like that. So, it's an interesting observation, okay, that it's associated with listening. So, don't underestimate the power of listening to the Quran and care to listen to the Quran. Alhamdulillah, today in your car, you can listen to it in your headphones and you know, where you in the kitchen and, uh, you know, walking, uh, exercising, you know, make sure that you attend the salah and you listen to the Quran. When the Quran is recited, listen to it. Imam Ahmed said, All agreed, the scholars all agreed that this is in relation to the salat. So those who leave after the four rak'ah, they miss the opportunity of listening to the Qur'an. They miss the opportunity of finishing the salah with the imam. You can ask someone to recite the Qur'an for you. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us among those who benefit from this book, the book of guidance, the book of mercy, the book of huda, light, mercy, shifa, healing. Allahumma ameen. And inshallah, we'll start with your questions. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us any tawfiq. Bismillah, Habs. Jazakumullah khair, Shaykh, and may I say, may Allah grant you shifa. SubhanAllah, I've seen even Shaykh Abu Isa wasn't able to make it with us last uh, you know, week because of his illness as well. So may Allah protect you all, all of our instructors, and grant you a swift and complete healing. Ameen, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Um, the first question that I have uh, submitted that's, again, coming from the, the, those that were submitted last week and in order and on the topics that are related to our to Ramadan is, if you go to the masjid for Tarawih and you want to leave after you pray eight rakah while the imam is continuing for 20 rakah, can you join the imam for two more with the intention of witr and you stand up after the second rakah while the imam is sitting at the shahid? Can you do that? Uh, you pray the two rakah with him extra. Then when he says salam, you give salam with him. Then you go back and you do one rakah by yourself. So you will not, 
to go against what the imam doing. Because also it is most common, the most common way of the Prophet ﷺ praying with her that he prayed to. And then Nabi ﷺ said, you pray two, two, two. Then if you worry that Fajr is coming, you pray with you end your witr, your salah with one rak'ah witr. Yes, and Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam prayed three together, but in the case like this, no, you don't do that. You just give salam and you do one rak'ah, alhamdulillah. You don't need to go against what the Imam is. It's always better to be similar to what the Imam doing, to copy what the Imam doing. Sounds good. Uh, the next question is, is it wrong to continue fasting while we are traveling? Uh, before I answer this, but it's always better to continue the 20 <clears throat> rak'ah and to finish the whole salah with him because the Nabi Sallallahu said, whoever prayed with Imam until the Imam finished, as if he prayed the whole night. And that's, it means the whole entire salah, even if there is two Imam leading the salah. Not with the first imam leave, halas, it finished. No, it, the imam here is not the individual. It means the salah itself and the imam of that salah. So if there are four people, six people, two people, one person is the same. Um, and so you miss that ajr as if you pray the whole entire night while you're sleeping at home. But if you have work or school, really you cannot um, pray for a valid reason. But just remember, in the Day of Judgment, Make sure that in the Day of Judgment, you're not going to regret leaving. In the Day of Judgment, you really have you know, enough pa'at and, you know, because the person in the Day of Judgment looking for any good deeds. So my advice for you is to always, or you go pray in a masjid that they pray eight rakahs to make sure that you end with the imam and you take that ajr. Um, the second question was in regard to it again, sorry. Let me grab it again. Bismillah. The second question is, is it wrong to continue fasting while you are traveling? Yeah. No, it's not. Uh, uh, sahaba, radiallahu anhum, when they travel, some of them fast, some of them don't fast. And uh, this is many a hadith came in the Sahih, Bukhari, and Muslim, and others, uh, reporting that some of them used to fast, some of them not to fast. And then Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi did not fast while he was traveling, and he fasted, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, while he was traveling as well. And um, if you feel tired and it became hard, it is highly recommended for you not to fast because this is a ruhsa, a break that Allah has given you. And Allah loves to see us taking the breaks that he gives us like we take also the, uh, the, the thing that it is hard and the thing which is, you know, uh, hard from what he, any, like for example, he asked us to pray uh, Fajr. Sometimes it's hard to wake up for Fajr, but we commit ourselves to it. You know, it's hard to pray Dhuhr because I'm so busy or whatever, but I commit to it because it's wajib on me. As you commit yourself to the thing that Allah SWT has put to on you, even if it is hard, also you should commit yourself to take these breaks when it is hard for you to take that break that Allah SWT offers offer you. It's like a gift Allah SWT gave it to you. And subhanAllah, Anas radiallahu anhu, I want to make this point because some people think, feel bad, that they will break their fast and traveling. Anas radiallahu anh, left his town after Asr. And by the time he got in the, he was traveling with the ship. And by the time he got out, was like not far away from Maghrib. Yani, uh, the Maghrib is, is near. Then he said, give me water, and he broke his fast. Even though maybe there's just few, yani, uh, maybe an hour or half an hour or less left. But he broke his fast for Maghrib. To make the point that it is he taking and accepting the ruhsa of Allah, the break, the gift from Allah. Then you make it up later on, inshallah. But if you want to continue your fast, that's fine. The next question uh, is, if we use a credit card to donate online, when does the zakah count? Is it as soon as we make the transaction, since that's when our intention is made, or after we pay off the sum from the credit card? Uh, after you pay it, I mean, uh, if you if you have the money to cover that amount and you pay your credit card, you know, it is the moment that you donated it. But technically, if you don't have the money or it will not count until you pay that amount of money. Unless you, 
Well, that's a good question, Yani. Um, unless we, we consider the credit card as uh, an agent for you. So in this case, it counts the moment you give the zakat. Yani, it needs a little bit of uh, contemplating. But, I mean, I don't know technically. Um, technically, you have given the zakat. But if you don't pay the credit card, okay, and you end up never paying that amount to the credit card, you did not give the credit You're going to give the zakat. Why? Because the credit card will dispute this with you, company, and said, hey, this is not, they did not willingly give the zakat on your behalf. So you end up not paying the zakat. Does that make sense? But if you are planning to give it and to give that and to pay the credit card, it's your usual. Oh, they became like an agent for you. But you have to pay attention to something when you give your zakat with the credit card. The credit card company, whenever the master charge the credit card, there is a, a fee, 3% or whatever. That cannot be taken from the zakat. So let's say your zakat is $100. And you pay through the credit card to the masjid. And the masjid, you ask, how much is the fee? They tell you 4%. The company that collect, some of them 4, 5, 3, it depends. They told you it's 4%. So that means there's $4 going to be collected by the company out of the 100. So what you need to give, you need to make sure that you're giving them $104. So you cover that amount of the 4%. So the hundred percent, the hundred dollars will be completely uh, received by the by the poor people or by the organization. Yes, that's actually a very important, interesting point. Now, if people can't find out directly how much that percentage is, can they estimate or maybe give an extra generous or a little bit amount just to make sure it's covered? Sure. Okay. Sure. But they can ask the the organization. <clears throat> Many of the organization even they tell you, "Would you like to add the fee?" your donation but you should ask yes Perfect. um the next question is i have a family member who doesn't go to the masjid because he said he doesn't want to pray behind someone who's aqidah he doesn't know so even for fridays he does his own khutbah at home with his kids so he doesn't go to the masjid at all are you able to quote me or mention anything from the quran that can be relayed about whether or not what he's doing is wrong yes allah said in the quran Qul hal bil Allah said, would you, would you want to know who is the worst losers? Are the one who do things thinking it is good and it is not. They are the one who will lose their deeds in the day of judgment. This a person is one of them. Unless this person lives in a city or a place where everybody in that place is known to be on a corrupt belief. Let's say he lives in a village and everybody in this village is among the extreme rafidah, those who curse Aisha and curse Abu Bakr and Umar and believe the Sahaba are kuffar and the Quran changed, or among the Jahmiyyah who deny Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's ulu and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's being Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's attributes and they completely like, you know, extreme, denying the sunnah of the Prophet sallam, and, and things of that nature. And this is the whole entire people, population. So he doesn't know any, any other than that. Uh, that person, maybe. But if you live in, in a community, in the society, yeah. All of them agreed that the default rules, that we take what appear to us. So if someone said, La ilaha illallah, khalas. And Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam accepted from the hypocrites. And he treated like Muslim. He prayed janaza on one of them until he was told that this person in particular is Muna. And uh, those people of bid'ah innovations, you know, they're not kuffar. Ahl sunnah do not make takfir to the, innovate, to the innovators. And Imam al tahawi rahimahullah, have said in his in creed, he said that Ahl sunnah agreed that as salat khalf kulli barrin wa fatah. We pray behind every person who is. Righteous or fajr or, or corrupt, uh, corrupt by actions or aqeed. Unless you know that this person by name is kafir. In this case, you don't pray him behind him. But other than that, you pray behind him. 
This kind of practice is the practice of the Khawarij, of the Kharijit, of the extremist, Daesh and ISIS and people like that. These are the people who uh, do things of that nature. That's their belief. Not necessarily he's one of them, but I mean, that's the ideology that led them later on to be an extreme and to be, you know, violence and, and so forth. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide him. I mean, this person, I, I encourage him to go contact one of Ahlul Ilm to teach him uh, and to educate him because that's dangerous not to pray in the masjid, especially Jumu'ah. Jazakumullah khair. The next question is During Tarawih, when praying behind an Imam, is it permissible for me to open the Quran app on my phone to follow along with the English translation? Yes, you are allowed to do that. And um, we give fatwa and uh, I, I uh, based on our uh, we give fatwa and amja in regard to this as long as the person will not uh, read the English while the Arabic is read. Like you don't say those who are and you read with the Imam in English. That's not allowed. But you read with your eyes without making voice or moving your tongue. Okay. And uh, in the past, okay, uh, they talked about can a person look at a book of tafsir or there is a tafsir on the side of the mushaf while he's in salah. And the ulama said, yes, as long as he doesn't read the words, but read with his eyes. He doesn't read it with his tongue and, and voice, but with his eyes. That will not invalidate your salah. If that's something make you have more khushur, more focus, it is allowed. And at Amja, the Assembly of Muslim Tourists in North America, we have fatwa in regard to that. Some people even put the, on the screen the translation of the of the verses that it is recited. Yes. Yes, sorry, the Sheikh just clarified at the end. So yeah, he's he's a senior member of the Permanent Fatwa Committee on the Assembly of Muslim Jurists in America. That's what he was referring to. Um, the next uh, question that I see here is, is it permissible for a woman to sit on her prayer mat at home while she's on her menstrual cycle? Yes, your prayer mat has no significance. That was an easy one. The next question is, what is the best way to cope with being lonely during Ramadan when you're not able to go to the masjid due to distance? Um, try to go. Uh, try to go, um, uh, yani, even in the weekend, uh, take an Uber, ask somebody in the community to come pick you up. You know, try to make, to put an effort. It's very beautiful to do that. If you can't, join the online community. You can watch the prayer in line uh, from your masjid. If you don't have, you're welcome to watch our salah and our khatar at Clear Lake Islamic Center. You go to themasjid.org, T-H-E, masjid.org. Live, uh, every day we have a live uh, Salat al-Taraweeh and the Khatar and the Dua. You know, uh, programs like this. I try to spend some time. It's important to be, Ramadan is a, is a month of gathering. And if you can't do any one of these, or that's not enough for you, I want you to know that you're never alone. A Muslim is never alone. You're surrounded with the best of Allah's creation, which is the angels. You are with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if you just think about that, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is your, com your companion. And everybody else have all these human beings as companions. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as well. But you alone with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Take advantage also of that. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for you to move to a place where you will be able to join the community. Allah, man. Yeah, but Just a quick reminder before we go to the next question is please remember when to submit any new questions to the Q&A form that we have for the Fatwa night. It's under the hand raise icon in your student portal and it's dropped in the chat. I'll make sure we drop it again if you've joined later in the session. Um, as well, please keep your ta your question under the topics of Ramadan uh, Ibadah and like, you know, the fiqh of Ramadan, as well as any of the topics that we've covered explicitly in our Ramadan 360 se session so far. If it's like, uh, I've got questions about cryptocurrency and things like outside of that. Unfortunately, we won't be able to honor that. There's just too, it's too big of a can of worms to open. So please uh, forgive us for that. So the next question that I have submitted is, if yeah, unless, comes... unless he's asking about cryptocurrency in regard to Zakat. Like Zakat. Exactly, yeah. exactly. If it's got a connection, then yes, we'll definitely let it in. 
Um, the next question I have is if one becomes sick while fasting, what are the rulings and the expiations involved? If you became sick, a sickness that you will heal from it, inshallah, in the future, you expect it, you just make it up, uh, you make up that day later on uh, before the next Ramadan, the best to do it before the next Ramadan. If this sickness, Allah forbid, something permanent, you don't know if you will ever be healed from it and you're not allowed to fast, that's what the doctor recommendations are. Um, in this case, or this the doctor recommendation is, um, um, in this case, you feed uh, a meal per a day. Yes. The next question is, um, if a person got a lump sum of money in October 2023 and they normally pay zakah in Ramadan, is it okay to pay zakah on this even though the saving has not been in their possession for a full lunar year? Yes, that's the, that's why we say this is the way that al-ulama rahimahullah recommend to give the zakat of the money. And it is the way of the generous people. You choose a day because it's hard to keep track of every amount come to your account. So the day of your zakat, you give whatever in your account. Sometimes you might just receive a big amount of money. Sometimes you might not. But if you want to make a special nisab for this amount, you can. Let's say it's, it's, you got a $10,000. So you're going to keep track of $10,000 for 12 months. And after 12 months, you're going to give zakat again outside Ramadan. And if you can, if you want to do that, but it's kind of hard to do that. But if it's a big amount, like I got $2 million, whatever, uh, that's a yeah, and you just imagine even a million dollars, 2.5 percent is what from a million dollars. Yeah, if I'm not a millionaire, where's my calculator? <laughs> Someone can, can do from that. A imagine. million dollars, it's like 2,500. Is it really? Yeah, like what you gonna be? It's a very small amount. No, 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 isn't that for a hundred thousand dollars? A million is 25,000, no? Uh, 25,000, no, I. I... No? Uh, two point five percent, twenty five. No, it's not two hundred fifty. We're all bad at math. Two hundred fifty thousand. Okay. Uh, is it? It can't. It's not two hundred fifty thousand. One, two, three. I have to do this. One second. One zero point. Just, just uh, two five. Uh, one million divided by forty. Oh, divided by forty. It's it's just twenty twenty five thousand dollars shift. Yeah, twenty five thousand dollars. Yeah, yeah. twenty five k. Right. Yeah. Okay. Twenty five. You're right. Twenty five thousand. So twenty five thousand dollars out of a million. You know what a million is. It's a thousand, <laughs> thousand. You know, that's a lot. So uh, alhamdulillah. So it's just a, it's considered a small amount of money, um, if you give it alhamdulillah. But if you want to keep track of this for twelve months, that's up to you. Just for faida, for benefit, for your personal benefit. 2.5%, mm -hmm. how you give the zakat? You have two ways to, to do it. Let's say the amount you have. You have a million dollars, you have $100,000, you have $10,000. Let's say you have $10,000. You want to give the zakat a little, $10,000. What do you do? You divide it by 40. That's the 2.5%. Okay. And if you basically, if you want, you can do the other way, which is 10,000 times 2.5 divided by 100. Then how you get that. Also, another point, when you want to calculate your zakat, let's say somebody, because of the nature of their business, their book, and they cannot fix it. So they want to follow the, the zakat has to be given in, in according to the lunar calendar. Okay? But what if I can't? I want to go by the July, May, you know, the Aquarian uh, calendar. In this case, which is not recommended, but if you're going to do that, your zakat is not 2.5. It's 2.577. Okay, go ahead. The next question we have is, I have a dear family member of mine who has constipation, and she's told me that after she prayed, she discovered that she isn't Tahir, uh, aka clean. And she told me that she stopped praying until the constipation problem is over. Is that right? And how can she pray when she isn't clean yet? I, I, I thought constipation means nothing comes out. So I don't know what she means by not clean. Okay. Um, 
I, I'm not sure what that uh, clean, but if she means like there is some kind of, because she takes maybe some medication and that will lead to some kind of discharges from the, uh, the bottom uh, that it is can uh, be bad. Uh, no, she clean herself before Salah. And anything happen after she clean herself is forgiven. Ukhti, no, not allowed to stop praying. Or brother, you're not allowed to stop praying. Can you imagine the woman who's bleeding in the stihala, blood coming out after she finished her period, but still bleeding. She still pray while she's bleeding. And one of the sahabiyat was, ple was bleeding to the extent, I'm not mistaken, uh, Asma, and she was, she had a, a container between her legs so the blood can fall on the container. That's how much she was bleeding. And she still, maybe someone ordered her to play. So that's, she has to go back and to make up all these days that she missed and she didn't pray. He or she, I'm not sure. Uh -huh. Sounds good, inshallah. Um, the next, sorry, somebody's asking for clarification um, again uh, about the 2.5 the Seven seven percent that you had mentioned. There seems to be a couple of, of of people confused in the chat. Sheikh, can you just reiterate the point? If you gonna give your zakat based on, or you did not give it based on lunar lunar calendar, you've been giving it based on Gregorian calendar. Okay. In this case, the zakat nisab is two point five seven seven. It's not two point five because. There's 13 days extra. Perfect. Jazakumakar yeah. for clarifying. So uh, you I have to go back, for example, previous years and to add this little amount, the difference, because the cat has to be done correctly. Mm -hmm. But if you um, give, that's why it is always recommended. You always give zakat. You always give charity. And in your intention is, Ya Rabb, if there is anything short of my zakat to cover. Mm -hmm. Yeah, lunar is 2.5. If it is the Gregorian calendar, 2.77. It's 2.77 no. or 2.57? Sorry, 2.577. Okay. okay. Sorry, 2.577. Um, okay. And I asked our resident doctor, our medical professional in the chat, and I clarified that, yes, the sister with constipation, it was probably miswritten. So either it's she took an enema and she sees herself as unclean or she might have met diarrhea or something. So, But the same thing would apply in that situation yeah. that she had just mentioned. Um, the yeah. next question is, um, I'm struggling to do the tadabur and tafsir of the Quran um, and also to put what kind of reflection that I obtain after that. Do you have any tips and tricks for a beginner and what guidance... Uh, is and without guidance of a preacher, is this still allowed? Also, which one comes first? Recite, memorize, or the upper? Recite and memorize comes first. And the dabur comes as a result of being able to recite. And when we say first, it's not like, okay, I finish all recitation. That, no. Uh, the dabur, not every time the person has the mind, the clarity to make the dabur. Why reciting? You will find reflection. You know, but this notion, oh, let's make khatma with tadabbur is better than 70 khatma without tadabbur. I think these are things discourage people from reading the Quran. Yeah, he read the Quran and you get reward from it with tadabbur or no tadabbur. That's number one. Number two, with tadabbur you have more. Number three, tadabbur is also comes sometimes in some verses and some, you know, in some moments, you know. Uh, and I'll tell you, uh, just uh, if you really like this concept and you want to know more about it, before, I advise you to take the course that we took together with Hafsa last time, which is Lost in Translation. How did you find that, Hafsa, with all honesty? Honestly, I, I didn't, it, it didn't make as much sense because I wasn't, I'll be honest, spending as much time going through recitation and going through through the translation before Ramadan, now that I'm spending every single day in Ramadan, I'm finding myself going back to the lessons and remembering what you were teaching us, subhanAllah. So it was definitely impactful. It just maybe a little bit delayed reaction. Alhamdulillah. No, alhamdulillah. I thought you were going to say, uh, no, it's not good, of course. No, I'm you told say. me to be honest. So there's, okay, good. There's I'm, I'm glad. Okay, alhamdulillah. Otherwise, you're going to be fired. But I'm <laughs> just saying. <laughs> just kidding. Okay, no problem. Uh, going back to the to the point here is um, uh, for tadabbur. One of the thing I'll to give you a tip. One of the thing that you always personalize the verses. 
And when you read something, you see how it personality. Like you read Qawlullah Ta'ala. وَبَدَى لَهُمْ مِنَ اللَّهِ مَا لَمْ يَكُونُوا يَحْتَسِبُوا يعني when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said uh, uh, and appeared to them in the day of judgment what they never expected from Allah you know what they never expected one thing that so scary to read this verse And I ask myself, what is the thing that I expected, taking for granted? I took for granted that Allah forgave me. I took it for granted that Allah accepted. I took it for granted that Allah will guide me. I took it for granted that inshallah Allah will help me to put hijab later on in my life. I'm taking for granted that Allah will give me time to give zakat, to make hajj. I'm just taking for granted. And all of a sudden I die before that. All of a sudden, I wasn't able to do that. All of a sudden, Allah gave me the money, but I didn't donate. And in the day of judgment, I see that. That I whatever I was expecting did not happen. That's scary. That make me rush to do more. مثلا, you say, Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. You praise him for what? And you start thinking. Whatever blessing that you have, it is from Allah. I start thinking, what are the blessings that Allah SWT has given me, especially to me? I, I make it so personal, this level. Okay? And the more you do that, the more you will be able to have to dabbur al-Quran. إِنَّ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ those who believe and do good, say, make them, give them love. What are the, how is my iman? How is my good deeds? Do I do enough of them? When was the last time I checked my iman? And so forth. Yes. Well, the next question. But I, I highly recommend to take in the course. It's called Lost in Translation. Yes, inshallah. Yeah. Alhamdulillah, we were we were spoiling everybody with the Dabr focused end of seer focused classes pre Ramadan. So look out for those, inshallah. And if you if you want a taste of it, I would highly recommend the the the, the quick version that we have on Faith Essentials that summarizes a lot of the concepts that we learned, uh, inshallah. The next uh, question that I have submitted is: Does reading the Quran? Oh, sorry, I think we already kind of answered this one. Um, the next question is, if a person's blood sugar goes very low, like below four during the afternoons, which force them to break their fast, do they have to pay fidya and pay the half day? Um, I'm not a doctor to say which number is not safe or not, but you consult that with your doctor. But if you know that this is not correct, which just sounds like that very low, uh, you make a, you basically break your fast and you just make up that day later on. No fidya. No. Okay, perfect. The next question is, um, are the fasts invalidated if I have improper desires? And, and here Bilal is saying, yes, below yes. four is dangerous. Obviously, um, you don't wait until it becomes dangerous. Mm -hmm. Don't push your limit. Alhamdulillah, if you are sick, Alhamdulillah, yeah, you can make, you can feed. And Allah SWT will, the good thing is you'll get the reward of fasting. Let's say you, your diabetes is not under control. And it would never be, it's not safe for you to fast for the rest of your life. Let's just say that. For you, you know what? You get the ajr of fasting every year. Perfect fasting, come on. Also. Alhamdulillah. Now invest your effort in something else. Anna, Anna, I'm, I'm, I'm sometimes, I understand, I love the feeling. I appreciate, and Allah SWT definitely appreciate that as well, you know, more that you appreciate your love for fasting because loving the act of worship is an act of worship in itself. Loving the any specific act of worship so much in itself is an act of worship, that love that you have for it. So that love for fasting, something Allah will reward you for. But Alhamdulillah, if this is not happening and not say, you don't need to, you know, it's not the only gate to Jannah. There is a, a scholar once was told about rich man, very rich, who prays a lot, fasts a lot, 
MashaAllah, read Quran a lot, but he never donate. Even though Allah give him so much money. So that scholar was asked, what do you think of such person? He said, this person insists to enter Jannah from other than the gate that Allah assigned for him. Allah wanted to enter from a specific, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give me that money, not to, yani, yeah, good to pray and fast, but that's not, that's not your, where you're supposed to excel. Pray and fast, يعني, leave it for people like us who don't have money. And I'm not saying he should not, don't misunderstand me. But what I'm saying, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala open for you. Now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make you unable to fast. That open for you the door to maybe excel in reading the Quran. Excel in donating. Excel in act of service. Excel in, in salah. It's not only one thing. That's why Jannah has multiple gates. That's why Subul is Salam. There is many ways lead you to a Salam, which is Al Jannah. I hope that concept kind of you cook it in your in your brain a little bit more and and see the value of it. It's like exactly somebody she has her period, halas. She became like a flat tire. She doesn't do anything. No, you still can listen to the Quran, you still can read the Quran, you still can maybe make food for people, you still can do so many du'a, you can make the dhikr, subhanAllah, alhamdulillah, Allah akbar. It's not only fasting. A brother who's like sick, a brother who's traveling, khalas, he leave everything. Nah. Yes. Jazakallah khair, Sheikh. So I have a couple more questions and then I know our regularly scheduled Ramadan 360 programming will have to begin. So welcome to those who are joining for that uh, and who are catching the tail end of our Fatwa night with Sheikh Walid Basuni. Uh, we'll get started for the program, inshallah, in a bit. But we want to try, try to get a couple more questions out of you, Sheikh, before we have to, to say goodbye for today. And inshallah, we'll save the rest for next week. Um, the next question that was beginning was, are the fasts invalidated if I have improper desires and my thoughts go there mentally time to time, but I do not act on them? No, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgiven the thoughts, but just don't make sure that you fight these thoughts because if you don't fight them, they became a plan and became intention and became actions. So you have need to fight them. The next question is, um, does using nicotine patches invalidate your fast? I'm getting different opinions. Is there a majority? Yes, it, on this? it does. It does break your fast okay. Okay. Uh, because because a simple reason because nicotine have an impact on the body in the same way that food has an impact on the body. Give you that, you know, like coffee, like you know, kick and 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 uh, observed by the body, and it is some kind of. It's a nutrition, even if it's not a, a good nutrition, but still a nutrition. That's why it breaks your fast. Great. The next you know, question. Um, mm -hmm. Sorry, the next question is, I've been told that according to Shafi and Hanafi schools, if a woman becomes pure from menstruation during the daytime after Fajr, the fast for that day must be made up, but she should refrain from eating or drinking, i.e. she should still fast until iftar. Is this the same for the Maliki school? It's not about Malik or Shafi or Hanbali. It is about um, uh, the reason behind this, okay? Uh, we're not here looking for some way out. Um, some scholars said she has to abstain from eating and drinking because, simply because, it is um, respecting the month, the respect for the month, you know? Uh, respecting the month and not showing uh, that in, in, in public because everybody's fasting and... and you know, so show respect for the month, respect for the people. Uh, in this case, we say if she eats in her own private place and nobody's seeing her, she's still respecting the uh, people and the public and, and she doesn't eat in public. But even in America or Canada or non-Muslim country, in my opinion, she can eat in public because um, she has her period. Because simply, it's not an, an, an... But she cannot do that in the masjid, for example. But in the mall, or majority of non-Muslims, she can't work with majority of non-Muslims, she can't. But if she is in a place where she works in a Muslim organization, no, she should not, out of respect for the month. Um, as other opinions said, no, or as some of the scholars look at it from a different perspective, they said the reason for her not to be fasting was removed. 
which is the period. So now she has no excuse not to be fasting. That's why she has to be fast. But that fast doesn't count because it didn't start from the beginning. So those people have nothing to do with the month or respecting feelings or respecting the month in public. No, they look at from technically from this perspective. And that point of art, that point of view is, is a good, interesting point. It's, it's a good point of view. But for me, it's not a strong one because if this is not a valid fasting, this cannot be called fasting because fasting is from dawn to uh, sunset or maghrib, from fajr to maghrib. So that cannot be called fasting. And uh, I do believe that the woman who have her period, you know, if she finish in the middle of the day, you know, she should not eat in publicly or out of respect in public or on Muslims or, but she can still continue eating and drinking because that's not, she's not fasting Islam and nothing to prohibit her from eating and drinking. Um, and the final question that will sneak in is, um, we there is have... a question I saw. I don't know if you if you have them or you have it or not. Something okay. about a sunan ratiba because people care on Ramadan to pray their sunnah. Okay. Did we have something like that? I'm Sheikh. There's a hundred and something of them. I may not be able to get. Okay. Through. Go ahead. What's your question? That you choose. We'll 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 make sure that we make note of it, inshallah, for the next session. Um, the next question that I had was, I have a long term health condition that's prevented me from fasting, so I've been praying paying fidya. I'm about to have a stem cell transplant, which inshallah means a cure, and that next year I'll be able to fast. Do I need to okay. repay this year's uh, this fast now that I know that I may be cured next year? Uh, no, whenever the, the operation been done successfully, alhamdulillah, from now on you can fast. And if you break your fast for a sickness, you just make up the day. But you still pay the fidya until you do the operation. Awesome sauce. Wow, Sheikh, you've been speaking. Allah Subhanahu wa Good, 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 uh, good mashallah uh, news. May Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala make it easy for you. Ameen, Ya Rabbul Alameen. Well, Jazakum Allah Khair, Sheikh Walid Basyuni, for that amazing session. Alhamdulillah, I think we went through such a variety. And to all of you for submitting such uh, detailed, relevant questions, I think many of us benefited, mashallah. And, and so many people were saying, oh, that was my question. I was going to ask that. Alhamdulillah. So that was great to see as well. Sheikh, a, a, an honor as always to have you back for Ramadan 360 and for uh, blessing us with our fatwa nights. Alhamdulillah. We look forward to two more of these sessions, inshallah, with you in the upcoming weeks. Any final reminder, inshallah, before we close off as we're in the middle 10 days of Ramadan? Wallah, I want to say something about the Sunan al Ratiba. The Sunan Ratiba, it means rat, Ratiba, it means connected to a Salah, which is our, the following. Um, the Shafi and the Hanbali believe it's 10 raka every day, which is two before Fajr, two before Buhr, two after Buhr, and two after Maghrib, and two after Isha. Uh, these are 10 rakahs, came in Hadith ibn Umar radiallahu anhu, Bukhari, and Muslim. But some ulama add to it two more, which is four before Dhuhr, uh, because it came in the hadith in Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, also in the Tirmidhi, that in Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said four before Dhuhr. And he said, these are the 12 raka'ah that we had in Habiba, that if you pray it every day, Allah build a house for you in Jannah. But there is also another sunan, it's called sunan mu'akkada, uh, highly recommended. And then Hanafiya call it sunan al-huda. Uh, guidance, sunnah that lead to guidance. The Tulum used to say the Muslim should not leave, they should not abandon. And they say the person who's worthy to give a testimonial is the person who continuously care for these salawat. And if a person abandon completely, they will not accept his testimonial in court in the old days. But in any case, to show you how serious it is, and these are the sunnah that highly recommended by the Prophet. And either because the highly recommended uh, uh, to pray in congregation like Eid and uh, you know spa, or highly recommended uh, because of situation like you know uh, you enter the masjid you pray two rak'ah before you sit down or highly recommended because of that just as it highly recommended like Salat al-Witr and a night prayer like Taraweeh that we pray my point here if you look at all these uh, 12 rak'ah every day and uh, 20 rak'ahs uh, highly recommended uh, rak'ah that you should do like 4 for example before asr if you add all this together you will find that the salah fill your whole entire day and I want you brothers and sisters 
to care for salah, care for salat al-faridah more than the nafila. Then you care about these recommended acts. Please don't leave after the, in the halfway in taraweeh. Please make sure if you come early to the masjid, don't stand up just looking. Don't sit and talk. Pray to rakah. You know, anytime. When is the last time you found yourself? What, tell me, when is the last time you found yourself? Have extra minute. And you said, you know what? Let me go pray to rakah. Salah has to be the central of our life. And Ramadan should revival these concepts, which is the important thing in Salah. And Salah should be the central. It is Amud al-Islam, the main pillar of Islam. Care for it. Learn how to do it. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect you. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to enjoy Ramadan. Thank you, Hafsa, for such always great host. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Meen Ya Rabbil Alameen, wa alaykum as salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, Shaykh Walid. I'm glad I'm not I'm keeping my job after today, alhamdulillah. Um, that was that was Shaykh Walid Basuni for our Ramadan 360 fatwa night, our second fatwa night of the experience. And inshallah, you look you can look forward to two more with Shaykh Walid Basuni. He's our director of, well, he's he's actually the president of Al Maghrib Institute. He's our senior scholar. Uh, and mashallah. He, we had a chance to benefit from him for the last hour answering our questions on the fiqh of Ramadan. Uh, we didn't actually squeeze in too many, uh, you know, off-topic questions, but alhamdulillah, we were able to get such, uh, you know, in-depth and clear answers from him. If you didn't get a chance to catch the, the session, please feel free to watch it in the recording. We're going to continue the same stream, inshallah. So for those who are joining us for our regularly scheduled Ramadan 360 programming, welcome. We've been kind of on a marathon today because we've had uh, the Quran challenge shifted at 3 p.m. EST. We just had our fatwa night. 4 p.m. And now we're going to jump in, inshallah, uh, with our 14th day of Ramadan 360 with Al Maghrib Institute, with our goal having been for the past 22 years to make knowledge easy and accessible to the masses. And you guys, alhamdulillah, I hope have benefited from a, a taste of that this Ramadan 360, almost halfway through the month now, two weeks in, mashallah, of our programming. And we continue going forward, alhamdulillah. Today's topic is going to be courage with Sheikh Abdel Nasser Jangda. Anyone here ha had, had the benefit? Benefit and the privilege of benefiting from uh, Sheikh Abdel Nasser in a session or a class or anything before in the past. Let us know what it was, inshallah. His his bio is so long. I don't think I can do justice to it. Mashallah, he's uh, been so well studied. But what what really stands out for Sheikh Abdel Nasser is just he's got this southern kind of charm, this kind of sweet nature, mashallah, that I can't wait for you guys to experience in his teaching. I love learning the sirah from him uh, for those. He's a specialist in sirah and Hanafi fiqh, so that makes sense. And for those who've had a chance to through Kalim Institute, I hope that you benefited immensely as well. Yes, he's you've done courses and Ilm Summit with him, mashallah. Um, I, I've caught a couple of like classes back in the day uh, on site with him, and I'm hoping one day we have the privilege of having him back for a special event or a seminar in the past. You've probably seen him a little bit through Ramadan 360. That's awesome. I see Surya, you mentioned you saw him last year um, and through some of our online programs and our, our webinars on the odd occasion, but it's always such a treat to have him back with us for Ramadan 360, alhamdulillah. And every time we have a session, either he has us in tears or he has us like on, on an emotional high. So I wonder what it will be, inshallah, this year. Wa alaikum as wa rahmatullah. Aziza from Trinidad and Tobago and to everyone who's continuing to join us for today's, uh, you know, 14th session of Ramadan 360 and who's been joining us for the last few days. We've been having quite a few sessions. For those who uh, weren't aware, we had our Oh You Who Believe webinar yesterday. I wasn't present for that, but I was catching some of the gems as much as I could before I had to leave. And uh, it was going beautifully, mashallah. Uh, I hope that you guys benefited from that. And of course, we've been having our uh, you know, Quran challenge. We're on the fourth day of that as well, benefiting from recitation and the practice uh, that we've done together as a community with Imam Imam Musam Sharif, our world-renowned uh, teacher of the Quran and reciter of the Quran. Alhamdulillah. Jazakumullah khair Fasleen for dropping these in the chat. Uh, of course, our uh, Ramadan 360 program would not be possible year after year. And a lot of the other programs that we do uh, for our lives during Ramadan and the Hijjah without the amazing support of our charity partners in the U.S., in Canada, in the U.K., in the U.S., of course, we have HHRD. In the U.K., we have Forgotten Women. And in Canada, we have Islamic Relief, all three amazing organizations, mashallah, that contribute to the alleviation of suffering of our Muslim brothers and sisters around the world, and especially are focused right now in the suffering that's happening in the extreme or the emergency situations 
in Gaza, in Sudan, uh, and others. So please do support them generously. Please do visit their links. Even if you're outside of Canada, US, or UK, you're able to donate. They have uh, you know different currency options available. So please check them out and continue to support them, inshallah. And of course, jazakum khair to everyone who's also been uh, making part of your consistent uh, kind of routine, alhamdulillah, to support a Maghreb's daily giving campaign. I know you've heard quite a bit about it, but uh, I, I have no shame in, in plugging it. Again, I, I'm honestly not someone who likes to plug things, especially if it's fundraising related, but I'm so confident and so uh, alhamdulillah wowed by the amazing work that's possible year after year. Whenever we do, like many organizations are fundraising in Ramadan, there's so much good that was so much uh, you know, high quality Islamic education that we're able to put out for the masses and to give access to folks who uh, you know, are not able to access it normally. Those uh, For those who are aware or may not be aware, we announced or we launched a one-click scholarship program in this past year to make it possible for single mothers, reverts, sorry, single mothers, uh, people facing financial difficulty and students, uh, the ability to get easy access to scholarships through our one-click scholarship system so that there was no, there was as as, as limited or as, as little prevention of you guys having the ability to join and to benefit from a mug of classes, especially on site. Um, hopefully you can check that out and support that continuation of that journey, inshallah, for students of knowledge who can't afford otherwise. Um, that's again through almagrib.org forward slash give daily. Our, our give daily counter is at 887. Let's see where we can be, inshallah, by the end of this session. Um, and Jazakum Khair, once again, who've already given. If you would like to, to support and to top up that, that support, inshallah, there's also a one-time donation option as well on the page uh, for you guys to benefit from as well and to, to share with others. Jazakum Khair to everyone who's uh, been with us for this three-hour uh, marathon session, who's been here from the very beginning. Um, I do see, you know, technically, I kind of want to break. I see my co-host, uh, brother Abdurrahman Wood, who's been in the session, who is, subhanAllah, I don't know, I don't know how he did a four-hour session in the background and supporting everything that we were doing with, with the OU Who Believe webinar. Brother Abdurrahman, while we wait for Sheikh to come on, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah, let me make you my, my interviewee. How are you doing today? Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alhamdulillah, everything is going well here in Ohio. How are you doing? Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah, I'm well. I hope Ramadan has been going smoothly for you. Uh, and you know what? Everyone's been complimenting my tree and my pink lighting. Genuinely, 90% of the reason why I got this tree, I was like, Abdurrahman's going to show up with his fancy schmancy background this Ramadan. <laughs> and everyone's going to be like, man, Abdurrahman always pulls it. Hafsa, I just wish sometimes that we'd see some lights in the background. <laughs> So I made sure I, I showed up. Mashallah, you, you always put it. Ihsan into your presentation. You did it right, Mashallah. Actually, I, I muted been... my light color after yours. So <laughs> I'll be on the same vibe, alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. Um, have you been enjoying? How was the webinar yesterday? And have you been enjoying Ramadan 360 so far? Alhamdulillah, the webinar yesterday was so special. It was it was really uh, a treat to go through the the different verses and have the different perspectives of the, our various teachers. Uh, I was researching, so Ya Yuhaladina Amanu, all you who believe, uh, from what I found, it appears 89 times uh, in the in the Quran, right? So we got a selection of the various uh, moments and gems that we can pull from some of those verses, but it led me on a, a further path of exploration just to kind of dive into some of the different instances when it occurs. And yeah, alhamdulillah, uh, uh, Sheikh Walid, we saw him earlier in the Fatwa night. He gave us yes. a lot of a lot of gems as well yesterday. Almost so they man with so many instructors from uh, different backgrounds, which we don't get to see that all too often. Ramadan yeah. brings those things together. It's uh, always lovely when we can see it all in one spot. Alhamdulillah. So, well, super well said. And I'm so glad we got a chance to a taste of you hosting uh, with Sheikh Omar yesterday as well. Um, now, I know, alhamdulillah, we're jumping into the session. Abdurrahman, you want to take over for me? You want to give me a break today or <laughs> shall I continue? <laughs> I'm here in whatever capacity I can be helpful, inshallah. All right, inshallah. I'll, I'll, give, I'll, I'll cut you a break right now, inshallah. <laughs> but I might bring you on later in this session. Jazakumallah khair for being with us, what Brother Abdurrahman Wood, uh, for alhamdulillah, the warm up today. And I see that Sheikh Abdur Nasser Jangda uh, is with us now as well for our topic for day number 14 uh, courage, inshallah, of Ramadan 360. Uh, so alhamdulillah, Jazakumallah khair for being with us so far to warm up for the session, for benefiting from the fatwa night for Sheikh Walid Basuni. If you haven't had a chance to uh, submit questions or you'd like to continue to be part of that, the links and everything is is in the chat. Jazakumallah khair, Sister Vaseline. But I want to bring on Sheikh Abdur Nasser Jangda for you all to benefit for this upcoming session, inshallah. And then you'll get a chance to reflect, inshallah, with us at the very end. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah, Sheikh. How are you doing today? Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alhamdulillah, I'm doing very good. 
Alhamdulillah. It's always an honor to have you bless our screens, Sheikh. It's always, and it's too too long of a gap in between, but it's great to have you back uh, with Amagriv's Ramadan 360 program. How's your Ramadan been going so far? It's going well. It's going really, really well, alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Really, really well. That's great to hear. Well, Sheikh, you have an amazing topic, the topic of courage uh, to cover with us. And then we'll, we're going to be reflecting afterwards in our Quran Reflect session with Isad Atemiya. So I can't wait to jump in, inshallah, and we'll catch you at the end for questions. Bismillah. All right. <clears throat> Bismillah wa alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'een. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Okay, so we today are talking about the topic of courage. So what I wanted to do here today, courage is um, shuja'a, uh, bravery, courage, valor, uh, almost a sense of like heroism, okay? These are very powerful and very universal concepts. So something that's very interesting is that you can actually find the seeds of courage within many other notable qualities and traits. Right. This is something that's quite fascinating. So even Iman, faith to believe requires a level of courage. OK, honesty requires a level of courage. Right. Integrity requires courage. So uh, patience requires courage. Right. So courage is something that's really essential and a component of many other attributes. However, however, I did want to talk about courage today from the Quran, from the Book of Allah, more so in the in the sense of how we typically use it and how we typically understand it, right? And that is in the meaning of to not be intimidated and to be willing to go up against even the greatest of odds and being able to put yourself in a very um, scary kind of situation, to put it plainly. Um, why? Because of what you believe, because it's the right thing to do. That's courage, right? Somebody who puts themselves in a dangerous or scary situation for fun, that's called recklessness, okay? Um, but it's courage when you are putting yourself in potential danger because of what you believe in, because it's the right thing to do. That's what makes it courage. And so I wanted to present a story because stories are powerful. They're easier to follow. You know, they're less kind of abstract and theoretical. And the story that we are going to be relying upon today for today's discussion is a very well-known, a very famous story. And I'm going to kind of summarize it here in the title. I'm going to tell you exactly what the story is, but then we'll go through it. And that is the story of David and Goliath, right? That is a story of courage. And let's go through the actual story. I think, subhanAllah, I think for one of the Ramadan sessions in years past, I think I've talked about this exact story, um, but it's okay. All right, because this is what's remarkable and beautiful about the Quran is that no matter what ang the same story, the same verse, the same ayah, no matter what angle you come at it from, different, different angles, you'll learn different lessons. I'll, I'll share something with you all today and why you should really, really cherish these sessions and any sessions that are related to the study of the Quran. At the seminary today. Um, in year four, we have an advanced tafsir class. It's called an anthology of classical tafsir. The anthology of classical tafsir. So it's an advanced tafsir class where we go through sections and portions of all the major classical works of tafsir, ummahat tafsir, 
right? The primary sources of tafsir study. Ibn Kathir, Qurtubi, Baydawi, all these very advanced tafsir. And one of them that we study is called the tafsir al-kabir, uh, which is the tafsir of Fakhruddin al-Razi, rahmahullahu ta'ala, Imam al-Razi. And we were reading the tafsir of Surah al-Kawthar. Surah al-Kawthar. Okay? Surah al-Kawthar, as we know, is the, in A'tinaq al-Kawthar, is the briefest surah of the whole Qur'an. It is the shortest surah of the whole Qur'an, mm -hmm. size-wise. And Imam al-Razi, and again, the print that we use of Tafsir al-Razi is that it's written in Arabic. It's that old style kind of like text where it's like a handwritten manuscript. So, and it's top to bottom, end to end, right? There's no footnotes, there's no side notes or nothing. It's just pure page of text. And so there's a lot on one page. If we if we made like a more modern, contemporary, computerized, you know, kind of um, print of it, um, it would probably one page would probably be at least two pages, if not even a little bit more. And on Surah Al-Kawthar, in Atina Al-Kawthar, he wrote 20 pages of tafsir on that surah. In that kind of paging. So, if we had a more contemporary kind of like print, it would probably be somewhere between 35 to 40 pages. That's how deep the Quran is. So no matter how many times you keep coming back to the Quran, you're always going to get something awesome. So let's jump into the story now. Okay. The story is at, in Surah Al-Baqarah. In Surah Al-Baqarah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions this. That, وَقَالَ لَهُمْ نَبِيُّهُمْ uh, Rather, first Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, أَلَمْ تَرَى إِلَى الْمَلَئِ مِنْ بَنِي إِسْرَائِيلَ مِنْ بَعْدِ مُوسَى This is, I'm starting from verse number 246, 246, if I'm reading this correctly, I will verify that number for y'all. Yes, 246. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that after Musa alayhi salam, the Israelites, Bani Israel, إِذْ قَالُوا لِنَبِيِّ لَهُمْ they went to their prophet. Now the narrations tell us that the name of this prophet was um, Simwail or Samuel. And they went to this particular prophet and they said, We need a king. Because the prophet was very old and they said, we need a, we need a general, a king, a ruler, somebody who can lead us into army like an emperor. Okay, and because the prophet was very elderly, so he said, we need somebody that can lead us. And because they were being attacked by other people, and so they said, we need somebody that can lead us in battle. And he said, He said, be careful, because if you're told, you're given the opportunity to fight, and then you're told to go fight, then you might not want to then you might be cowardly. That is the antonym. Right? The Arabs would say that the best way to recognize something oftentimes is to look at the opposite of it. So courage, cowardice is the opposite of courage. So they, he said, be careful. Don't be cowardly. Okay? Don't resort to cowardice. They said, why wouldn't we fight? These people, they have terrorized us. They kicked them out of our homes and removed, separated our families from us. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us at the end of the story, he says, guess what? When Allah finally did tell them to fight, the majority of them did not go. The majority of them were too cowardly. Wallahu alimun bi dhalimin, and Allah knows best who are disobedient. Waqala lahum nabiyuhum in Allah kadabatha lakum taluta malika. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent a, has appointed a king for you, and it is talut 
whereas the Bible mentions his name, the Old Testament mentions his name, Saul. قَالُوا أَنَّا يَكُونُ لَهُ الْمُلْكُ عَلَيْنَا وَنَحْنُ أَحَقُّ بِالْمُلْكِ مِنْهُ وَلَمْ يُؤْتَسَعَةَ مِنَ الْمَالِ They said, why would he lead us? We have more money than he does. He's not rich. Because Allah did not make wealth a criteria of leadership. قَالَ إِنَّ اللَّهَ اسْتَفَاهُ عَلَيْكُمْ وَزَادَهُ بَسْطَةً فِي الْعِلْمِ وَالْجِسَمِ Allah has appointed him because Allah has granted him knowledge, understanding of the religion, and Allah has granted him physical strength, meaning courage. So, knowledge, understanding of the religion, and courage. That's the criteria for leadership. Let's look at our ummah. Who did the Prophet ﷺ appoint? Who did he tell us was going to lead us by appointing him to lead the prayer? It was Abu Bakr. What did Abu Bakr had? He had the understanding of this religion and he had courage. So much courage that when people were, tribes were apostatizing after the passing of the Prophet and they were leaving Islam, Abu Bakr said, not on my watch. Not on my watch. When some tribes tried to come along and undermine the credibility of Medina, he said, not on my watch. Courageous. He had courage. He said, I will do whatever has to be done. So, and then, Then in ayah number 248, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that he had a sign of him being their rightful general and leader. And that was that the angels would come and they would bring the Ark of the Covenant and that would defeat the enemies and put awe into the hearts of the enemies and then they would have victory. Let's keep going. Allah is going to test you with a stream. So they, the narration says there were 70,000 of Bani Israel, but who was actually worthy? So there was a test. And the test was that Allah is going to test you with the stream. <clears throat> Whoever drinks from the stream, he is not with me. <laughs> Except for somebody who maybe just took a little sip, that's fine. So, you know, because you got to, if you're feeling dehydrated, that's fine. But don't fill up your canteens. You know your 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 thermoses with water. Don't do that. For shari minhu illa most of them drank from it because they're, the human being is nervous, is panicky, is finicky. The human being can resort back to cowardice very easily. He said, "Be courageous. Know that Allah will take care of you. Don't hoard. Don't be nervy. Don't be worried. Don't be nervous. Don't do that." But most of them ended up drinking from the water. Then the king, Talut, he crossed through the stream and the believers were with him and they said, And again, the cowardly people, they said, oh, we can't defeat Goliath. And the army, we can't defeat them, we can't defeat them. But the people who believed in Allah, truly believed in Allah, they said a statement. Listen to this. How many times has it happened in history? A small group. غلبت فئتن كثيرةً بإذن الله. That a small group dominates, overcomes, defeats a huge group بإذن الله. Only and solely by the will and the permission of Allah. So that is courage. That they were not even affected by the numbers. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us 
that, and then they say, الصابرين, Allah is with the people that are patient. And when they met Goliath in the army in the battlefield, they said, Our Lord, pour patience, strength, courage from you upon us. One sunnah. على القوم الكافرين وثبت قدامنا excuse me وثبت قدامنا and strengthen our feet make our feet firm allow us to stand up to the challenge وانصرنا على القوم الكافرين and then give us victory over these disbelieving people these enemies who transgressed against you and they are here to defy you Give us victory over them. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَهَزَمُوهُمْ بِإِذْنِ اللَّهِ They defeated them by the permission of Allah. Courage, bravery, sincerity, belief in Allah. وَقَتَلَ دَاوُدُ جَالُوتَ And that's the moment where the world gets introduced to this remarkable young man who kills Goliath, and that is none other than Dawood, alayhi salam. الْمُلْكَ وَالْحِكْمَةِ وَعَلَّمَهُ مِمَّا يَشَعُ And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala granted him a kingdom, and wisdom, prophethood, and taught him whatever Allah willed, because he was a prophet of Allah. And there's a hadith of Bukhari, in which Bara ibn Azib radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he says that we used to mention, kunna nathkur, anna iddata ashabi badr, iddata alladhina ma'atalut, that the number of companions who participated in the Battle of Badr 313 were the exact number of the people the people who, remember, he had 70,000 people in his army, but then they all fell into the trap because they were all nervous and scared and anxious and cowardly. So then they drank from the stream. And they filled up their thermoses and their canteens from the stream. And, but there were only the faithful, the, the faithful, the devout, who did not do that. And they crossed the stream with Talut and made it to the other side and stood by him. And the Sahabi says that we used to discuss about the fact that this number of people who remained with Talut and crossed over the stream were the same exact number, 313, that were with the Prophet in the Battle of Badr. It's never been about the numbers. It's about what the people are made of. Their iman, their sincerity, their courage. It's about what they're made of. There's a verse in Surah Al-Anfal that is so beautiful, so powerful. It's ayah number 26. Chapter 8, ayah 26. Chapter 8, ayah 26. وَذْكُرُوا إِذْ أَنْتُمْ قَلِيلٌ وَذْكُرُوا Allah says, remember. Allah says, remember when you were very, إِذْ أَنْتُمْ قَلِيلٌ When you were very few in number. مُسَضْعَفُونَ فِي الْأَرْضِ You were oppressed. You had no strength. You had no, you had no position. دَخَافُونَ أَنْ يَتَخَطَّفَكُمُ النَّاسِ By the way, courage doesn't mean that you're not scared. Courage doesn't mean that you don't recognize a threat when you see it. If I may be blunt, not recognizing a threat when you see one is called stupidity, not courage. Right? When you see like a car coming at you and you're like, I guess I'll stand right here. That's called being stupid. Okay? That's not shuja'a, that's hamaka. 
Okay? That's foolishness. But courage is you recognize a threat. But it means you jump out of the way. But tomorrow, the next day, or later that day, when you got to go for Salah, you're still going to walk out your door and go for Salah. Oh, but what happens? What happens if somebody try to run me over again? None. I'm going to do what I need to do. By putting my faith and my trust in Allah. And then I'll take the step. That step is courage. That step is courage. So Allah says to Khafuna, you were afraid. So remember the time when you were very few and you were oppressed. You were downtrodden. The Khafuna, and yet the nas. And you were afraid that the people would snatch you up. That the people would snatch you up. Fa'awakum. But then Allah protected you. Allah sheltered you. Wa'ayyadakum bi nasrihi. And he helped you through his divine assistance. وَرَزَقَكُمْ مِنَ الطَّيِّبَاتِ And then he provided for you so many beautiful, remarkable, good things. لَعَلَّكُمْ تَشْكُرُونَ And he did it so that you may be grateful. And even though this is a separate quality, which is humility, but I wanted to mention this part. Because again, to be truly courageous, according to the definition of the Qur'an, it requires being humble. If a person's arrogant, that's not courage. That's not, no, that person's delusion. But true courage, a truly courageous person has a humility as well. They have a dignity, they have a humility about them. And that's why Allah says, And I'll end with this particular comment. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made the Prophet وسلم, the embodiment of courage. The hijrah. The journey to Ta'if. The hijrah. Badr, Uhud, Khandaq. Hudaybiyah, Fathu Makkah. The Prophet was the ultimate embodiment of courage. And the Sahaba around him also demonstrated and showed an embodied courage. Like we just said at the Battle of Badr. And they are our role models. However, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala provides us glimpses of that, of, of courage. Remarkable courage from time to time. And what we are seeing right now with our brothers and sisters in Gaza, that is courage. I believe he spoke to the Maghrib community, but one of the Al Maghrib instructors who studied with us at the seminary is a very, very, somebody very close to me, very near and dear to me who went to Gaza to serve the people there in a medical mission. And when he was telling me about the stories of their courage and their bravery, it's remarkable. It's amazing. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has provided us with real life heroes. The most courageous people you will ever see the most brave souls you'll ever witness. So take that inspiration and draw inspiration from it. And we pray and we ask, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant them victory. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant them freedom. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala remove the oppressors from them. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to be able to live by the values and the qualities and the beautiful traits that the Qur'an teaches us about. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the ability to practice everything that we've said and heard. 
سبحان الله وبحمده سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك نشهد ان لا اله الا انت نستغفرك ونتوب اليك بارك الله فيك يا رب العالمين جزاكم الله خيرا السلام عليكم ورحمه الله وبركاته وعليكم السلام ورحمه الله وبركاته جزاكم الله خيرا thank you so much for that wonderful session شيخ قرات it's always uh, good to see you and to hear from you uh, some amazing gems i saw mashallah the students that were on camera were diligently taking notes which we love to see tying down that knowledge alhamdulillah and uh, being inspired by the past and present stories of courage uh, in the Quran and that are inspired through Islam. Uh, there's, uh, subhanAllah, one of the points that came out in the chat, and I think you touched on it, but maybe we could put a bow on it, so to speak. Uh, they asked, what are the limits of courage? And you talked about how we need to distinguish between uh, avoiding cowardice and how we need to make sure that we're not in the realm of stupidity as well. Uh, but is there a limit uh, and I know that could be interpreted different ways, but what what, what is your thoughts on that? Yeah, yeah. So in in generally in usul, um, the scholars of usul, what they've written is that um, there are. So I'll explain a couple of bullet points. Number one, um, if the threat in the in the way of doing good, in the way of doing what's right, if the threat is minor. And the distinction between a major and a minor threat is loss of life or loss of limb is considered a major threat. Anything less than loss of life or loss of limb is called a minor threat. So in the path of doing good and what's right, if a minor threat comes, you got to push through it. You got you to gotta embrace whatever's coming your way. You got to be courageous. However, they write that in the way of doing good, if a major threat in, uh, uh, comes upon you, loss of life or loss of limb, then Allah has provided us with the concession to not take that head off. But rather Allah wants us to live to strive another day. And that's its own kind of courage. Because sometimes living to keep fighting, to keep working, to keep striving, to keep doing good is its own kind of courage. Um, however, there's one exception to it, and that is if a person if a person is being forced or the threat is to their iman, their faith, then it is admirable for them to even be willing to give up their life for the sake of what they believe, like the Sahaba did, and like we see our brothers and sisters doing right now. Allah. And thank you so much uh, for, for that uh, amazing explanation and, and elucidation. Another question, uh, what are some tips to develop this within ourselves, to develop courage? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Quran, لَقَدْ كَانَ فِي قَصَصِهِمْ عِبْرَةٌ لِيُولِي لَلْبَابِ فَقُصُصِ الْقَصَصِ لَعَلَّهُمْ يَتَفَكَّرُونَ So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Quran, أُولَئِكَ الَّذِينَ هَدَ اللَّهُ فَبِهُدَاهُمْ these are the people that God gave guidance to. So follow in their footsteps and you'll reach God's guidance. So it's kind of like Allah is telling us, okay, Allah gave guidance to the prophets and the messengers. And Allah made it easier for us because then the prophets and the messengers are role model. And Allah is saying, you just need to follow in their footsteps and you'll automatically reach Allah. So a big tip for developing courage is to keep going back to the stories of the prophets, the life of the Prophet وسلم, and keep drawing inspiration from that and keep doing that reflection, that pondering, that self-talk. So next time you're kind of in getting too easily intimidated for doing the right thing, and you say, wait a second. The Prophet وسلم, wasn't afraid on the Battle of Badr. The Prophet وسلم, wasn't afraid when he entered into Mecca. The Prophet wasn't afraid to go stand on the mountain of Safa and preach in front of all of the Meccans. I got to be more brave. I got to have a little more courage. So then you're able to do that kind of self-talk and you're able to motivate yourself to inshallah hopefully grow in that courage. Beautiful. Beautiful. Jazakallah khair and thank you so much, uh, Sheikh Abdul Nasir Jang. I really appreciate your time. Uh, always, alhamdulillah, a staple of the Ramadan 360 program. And uh, may Allah bless you and bless your efforts. And may he give us all the courage that you described uh, to uphold our deen and to face the threats that are uh, coming to this ummah, whatever direction they're in. 
And may Allah continue to bless us with knowledge of his book as well. We really appreciate your time. Thank you so much. Uh, that was Abdul Nasser Janga, Sheikh Abdul Nasser Janga, for day 14 of Ramadan 360 on the topic of courage. Alhamdulillah, it's a story that we've heard, uh, perhaps read many times, but I came away inspired, feeling more courageous in my own heart just after hearing the Sheikh's words. I hope that we all feel the same. Wow, day 14, uh, Nemo is exactly right. Uh, SubhanAllah, this month always goes by quickly, uh, but let's value every moment. It's not over yet. We're halfway through, and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put barakah in what we've completed and what's remaining as well, bi'idhnillahi ta'ala. Uh, so we do have, uh, stay tuned, inshallah, we're not quite done yet. We do have, of course, uh, the Quran Reflect coming up momentarily. We do also have a Kahoot coming up after Ustad Taymiyyah. Those of you who are in the Kahoot before, you know it's a lot of fun and it's an opportunity to revise the knowledge that we learned. So please stay tuned for that, inshallah ta'ala. Uh, and also keep in mind, we do have uh, tomorrow the 10-day Quran challenge. I saw many of you were in that Earlier today at 3 p.m., tomorrow 1 p.m. Eastern time, the 10-day Quran challenge continues with Imam Wissam. So we'd love to see you all there, inshallah, Azza wa We also want to take a quick look at our campaign number, our daily giving campaign. Uh, we described it, uh, we've been describing it throughout the month of Ramadan. We are uh, not about necessarily how much you're giving, but the idea of giving on a regular and continuous basis uh, so that we can have as many people as possible sharing in the investment in our students in experiences such as this, in the, uh, the on-site experiences, the uh, tarbiyah, the murabbi programs that we do, the experiences that we have uh, across the world, alhamdulillah, and the hundreds of thousands of students that have benefited. Uh, who can remind me what the number was? Does anyone remember what number we were at prior to the session? Where were we at? Let's see. Uh, let's see if we can share our screen. 700 something? 828? Somewhere in there, right? Uh, let's take a look and see where we're at now. All right, mashallah, we are at 888 donations, alhamdulillah. Or that's 888 donors who are, uh, they have committed to giving on a regular basis. So they have a dollar amount. It could be $1.50 per day. It could be $10 per day. Whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala facilitate for them. I know I calculated for myself, you know, what is my daily cup of coffee look like? Or if I go out and grab a snack, what does that average out to during the month of Ramadan? And let me just give that because I was going to give it anyway. And that way I can ensure that it's going to, inshallah, an even better cause. So I encourage everyone who hasn't done so to go ahead and do that. We do know we have a lot of folks who are international as well. If you can't pay with credit card for some reason or can't take part of this campaign, we have one-time donation options that are also set up. And also if you have access to Cash App or Zelle or Venmo, you can use all of those options, inshallah ta'ala. But just bear in mind that uh, this is indeed a sadaqa jariya. This is something that we can give that will continuously pay off. And all of you can attest to this. Those of you who have been with us in Ramadan 360, whether this is your first year or whether you've been doing it year after year after year for the last few years that we've had it, you know that this knowledge, inshallah, is something that you continuously take with you, right? It's not something that we are, uh, it's not just one time, but the lessons, the motivation, the knowledge that we're taking, we're sharing it with our friends and family. We're sharing it with our communities. We're implementing it in our lives. It is inspiring the way that we pray, the way that we make dua, the confidence that we have in our deen. Uh, we go to the fatwa nights and we get answers to the pertinent questions that we have in our lives. All of those things are things that are continuous. So if we take a moment and make that sort of investment in our fellow brothers and sisters, those who want to attend classes, those who want to have uh, high quality experiences that are relatable, that are conveying authentic Islamic knowledge, if we invest in that, then inshallah, every time that they go and make dua, every time that they do salah, every time they give charity, every time they go to hajj and umrah, every time they give da'wah, uh, maybe they'll become our next instructors. Maybe our next instructor is here in this call, right? And you're investing in that and that is, inshallah ta'ala, an investment that will outlive all of us. And so we pray that Allah Azza wa Jal, He puts benefit uh, and He puts khair in all of our efforts uh, as students, as instructors, as volunteers. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to be supportive of this beautiful effort uh, that we are all engaged in. Ameen, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Uh, also, one more time, I do want to mention our charity partners. As we're in the spirit of giving the month of Ramadan, of course, we have HHRD in the USA. We have Islamic Relief in Canada. And we have Forgotten Women in the UK. 
please support them using the links that we provided. We'll continue to share those as well. And that way we can ensure that we're giving to those causes that are needed uh, all over the globe, alhamdulillah. Uh, so with that, I think we have some good energy in the chat, mashallah. People are feeling good. Uh, I want to say we are probably ready to start to reflect. Uh, who's ready to reflect with us, inshallah? Mashallah, we got some energy. It's there. It's there. I see it. All right, bismillah. So let's go ahead. And I'd love to invite uh, Ustada Taymiyyah. Let's see if I can add her spotlight. And yes, we are there. Ustada Taymiyyah, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. How are you doing? Alhamdulillah, energized in this group of uh, amazing students and dedicated teachers. It is always a boost of energy. I was feeling a little bit tired before the session, but that's the way I am ready to go, inshallah ta'ala. And so excited to hear that's what's awesome. coming, inshallah ta'ala. How are you doing? Alhamdulillah, I'm well. Jazakallah khairan. Alhamdulillah, jazakallah right. Let's begin. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على رسوله الكريم. <clears throat> so shajara, uh, courage, bravery, to be bold and to be daring, uh, is not actually mentioned in the Quran. The word shajara itself is not mentioned in the Quran, and I was a little you know, uh, hesitant when I was preparing that, okay, the word does not come in the Quran, so which verses do I select? But then when I started looking at the meaning of shajara, I was like, the Quran is filled, filled with examples of shajara, of bravery, of courage. And the Quran is constantly uh, giving us courage as well. It is, it is a source of courage because of uh, you know, the promises that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made and the lessons that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala teaches us through different stories and through different examples. So let's uh, look at the word shajara first. The word shajara basically means to be, courage to be courageous uh, in war, all right? And shajira is a woman who is very audacious, meaning she has the courage to speak in front of men and she can go on and on and say whatever that she wants to say to them and shujar is a snake that is small and slender but it's very thin but it's very bold and if you think about it a snake doesn't have an arm it doesn't have a leg it's literally just got a head with two eyes and a mouth and yet it dares, right? So courage is not that you, you know, that, that everything is perfect, everything is in control, and you're very comfortable, and then you're going to do something that you believe in. No, courage is about finding yourself in difficulty, in, 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 in a situation of fear, all right? And then you you still do what is right. You still say what is right. You still speak the truth. So courage is not when things are under control or when things are easy and convenient. Courage is also not the absence of fear because some people, mashallah, you know, they, they don't get stressed out easily. They don't get afraid quickly. Courage is about being afraid because you know, you understand how dangerous, how serious a situation is, but still you say the right thing, you do the right thing. So it is the it, it is to, to have strength in the face of pain, in the face of fear, in the face of worry. And, and why should we not feel like this when we know we are weak, right? If you think about it, when we feel afraid, when we feel anxious, it's because we know we are weak. We know that, uh, you know, the the things that we fear uh, are, are not just imaginary; they're they're real dangers. And Allah Subhanahu wa Taala Himself tells us that al insanu darifa, that the human being has been created weak. We know we are weak. So, why have courage? As we learned earlier, because we believe in Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. And because we have to face him one day and be answerable to him. 
Now, when we see the Quran, we see that all of the prophets of Allah, they are a perfect examples of courage. Why? How? Because they were called names. They were, uh, you know, opposed and they were harmed and they were ridiculed, right, by their people. But still, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in Surah Al-Ahzab, that الَّذِينَ يُبَلِّغُونَ رِسَالَاتِ اللَّهِ وَيَخْشَوْنَهُ وَلَا يَخْشَوْنَ أَحَدًا إِلَّا اللَّهِ that the prophets of Allah are those who convey the messages of Allah and they only fear Allah and they don't fear anyone but Allah. And this is why they were able to convey. Now, in the Quran, of course, every story of every prophet is, is a story of courage. But then we also see examples of various believers. Like, for example, in Surah Ghafir, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us about the, the man who believed in Musa alayhi salam. And he was from the people of Fir'aun. In verse number 28, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions, وَقَالَ رَجُلٌ مُؤْمِنٌ مِنْ آلِ فِرْعَوْنَ يَكْتُمُ إِيمَانَهُ He was from the family of Fir'aun and he was actually hiding his faith because he knew that it was not safe for him to openly declare his faith. But when Fir'aun decided to kill Musa alayhi salam, this is when that believing man what did he do? He had the courage to disclose his faith and he came in the defense of Musa alayhi salam. And yes, he was killed eventually, right? But uh, but he did the right thing by having the courage to speak up and to defend Musa alayhi salam. Then we also have the example in Surah Yasin of the people to whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent uh, several prophets to, three prophets to, and the people denied them. But then what happened? A believing man came running from the from the farther end of the city in order to defend the messengers. And yes, he was also killed. He was also killed. So being courageous doesn't mean that you're not going to suffer any harm. You're not going to uh, you're not going to you know uh, experience any kind of difficulty. No, being courageous is about putting your trust in Allah, not in yourself. Putting your trust in Allah because you know that Allah is there. You are weak, but Allah is there. And in, in, in Surah Al-Ma'idah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in verse number 54, that, يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا مَنْ يَرْتَدَّ مِنْكُمْ عَنْ دِينِهِ That all you who have believed, whoever among you leaves his religion, then فَسَوْفَ يَأْتِ اللَّهُ بِقَوْمٍ يُحِبُّهُمْ وَيُحِبُّونَ Then Allah will bring about another people in your place. Meaning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can easily replace you with some other people. If you turn away, if you abandon the religion of Allah, you don't step up, you leave, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can easily replace you with another people. Who are those people? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes them. That يُحِبُّهُمْ Allah loves them. وَيُحِبُّونَهُ And they love Allah. أَذِلَّةٍ عَلَى الْمُؤْمِنِينَ They are humble with the believers and they are أَعِزَّةٍ عَلَى الْكَافِرِينَ They are very difficult for the disbelievers. يُجَاهِدُونَ فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ They strive in the way of Allah. وَلَا يَخَافُونَ اللَّوْمَ تَلَائِنَ They do not fear the criticism of any critic. Look at this. This is the description of who? the people whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, blesses uh, to strive in his way and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grants them success. One of their characteristics is that they do not fear the criticism of any critic. Why? Because they give preference to the approval of Allah over everything else. And this is something that every single one of us needs to think about. That when I make the different decisions that I make with regards to, you know, what I study, where I go, how I carry myself, what I wear, right? Uh, what I support, what I write, uh, whatever I do, what is it that I'm seeking? Is it that I'm seeking the approval of Allah or I'm seeking the approval of people? Because if we're seeking the approval of Allah always, then you know what? There will be somebody or the other who will criticize us who will not be happy with us, who will criticize, you know, what we're saying, what we're doing, what we're eating, what we're writing, 
right? So those, so in this ayah, we learn about the importance of not fearing the criticism of people. And that is only possible if we give preference to the approval of Allah over everything else. That ultimately our goal is that Allah is pleased with us. And that we fear Allah more than we fear people. Because we have to stand before Allah and we have to answer Him. He, he will hold us responsible. He, he, will, he will question us. So the fear of Allah and the desire for Allah's approval, that is the only thing that can shield a person from the fear of what people will say. The fear of people's criticism. And there's numerous ahadith that mention the importance of speaking the truth, even if it's bitter, right? Or even if there is, uh, you know, some kind of danger, like in front of a, 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 a person of authority who is very oppressive. Now, in the Quran, we also have uh, many du'as that we can say, uh, that we can make in times of fear in order to gain courage. First of all, we have the example of the Sahaba at the time of the Battle of Uhud, right? When people told them that, that people are you know, coming together to fight you, so fear them. But what happened? They said, So this should be our first statement. The first thing we should say when we feel fear. Because we're not believing in our own power. No, we're believing in Allah's power. Allah is sufficient for us. Right? And He is the best protector. In Surah Tawbah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in the last ayah that if people turn away from you, O Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, then you should say, Hasbi Allah. Allah is enough for me. If people abandon you, say, Allah is enough for me. If you feel alone, Allah is enough for me. La ilaha illahu. There is no God but Him. Alayhi tawakkaltu. I put my trust in Him. Wa huwa Rabbul Arsh al -Azim, And He is the Lord of the Great Throne. Then, of course, there's uh, du'as from the sunnah as well. We see that when the Prophet ﷺ would go for any uh, any uh, battle, Anas radiallahu anhu said that the Prophet ﷺ would say, Allahumma anta abudi wa nasiri, bika ahulu wa bika asulu wa bika uqate. That, oh Allah, you are my strength and you are my support. How is it that the Prophet ﷺ had so much courage? Is it because he had all of these resources and he had the you know so many uh, people with him supporting him, uh, so much wealth and uh, you know weapons at his disposal? No, he had Allah, and the one who has Allah is the one who has courage. Allahumma anta abudi wa nasiri. You are my strength, you are my support. Bika ahulu, wa bika asulu, wa bika uqatil. It is with you, yani with your help and for your sake that I go forth, that I face the enemy and that I fight the enemy. With you and for you. So this is the source of courage, knowing that Allah is there and striving for His sake knowing that one day we're answerable to him. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us all wisdom and courage. Allahumma ameen. So let's hear from you now. Um, uh, inshallah, you can raise your hands and remember, keep your reflections uh, within 30 seconds and uh, straight to the point, inshallah. All right, go ahead. Sister Prazana, bismillah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Uh, it was a great session, alhamdulillah. When you said Shadia, it's a woman who has the courage to talk in front of the man and she keep, uh, goes on with her debate. It reminded me of uh, Khola bint Saliba. When she was in a situation, like she was, she was faced with that ritual, the custom, Zihar. Mm -hmm. And she went straight to the Prophet wasallam, And she was not the first one who was facing this thing. But she was the first one to talk on this point. And that the Rasul 
kept silent and he just listened to her. And it was Allah who replied to her. This was the Sharia. This was the woman, the courage. Mm -hmm. And then I was thinking about the story of Ibrahim, salam, how he had the courage to break all those idols. And then he, he said, ask the, uh, the, the eldest one, the biggest one. And they said, it cannot. But at the time, I was I was thinking about the frog. I was listening to Dr. Umar Suleiman when he was talking about this thing, when Ibrahim alayhi salam out of this, uh, uh, when he was just brought to the court and they decided to burn him. He said there was a frog who was carrying a, a, a sort of a, some water in his uh, mouth. And he said, when on the day of judgment, Allah is going to ask me, what did you do when my prophet was being burnt in front of you? So this was the courage of the frog. Today, I think Palestine needs us. I was listening to a, um, a man who just lost his son. And he said, don't worry. You're going somewhere that's you'll be happy over there. But just tell the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that your ummah has given up on us. Today, we cannot even just leave up or give up eating at KFCs or McDonald's. Allah. We cannot give up on drinking Coke. Our children, they say, we do not have any other options. What can we do? Oh, and look at the people, what they did for this deen, for the nation. And what are we doing? This is, we, we lack courage. I am not the Sharia because I cannot stop my child eating at KFC or McDonald's. What can I do? Oh, I'm, I, how am I going to face the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam on the Day of Judgment? This makes me like terrible. I just can't think of myself standing in front of him when he'll be asking me, what did you do? I lack the courage, simply. I do not have that courage. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us all tawfiq. Amen. Tazakila khayran. Razan. Razan Tahir, you're welcome. Go ahead. Sorry, Razan, your voice is really faint. Wa alaikum wa rahmatullah. Are you able to get closer to the microphone? Or to speak louder? Sorry, Razan, can you hear us? Okay, we'll give Razan just an opportunity to reconnect the mic, inshallah, and, to, and hopefully we can hear her clearly next time. Uh, Sanya, if we can have you next, inshallah, go right ahead, Bismillah. Um, my reflection is when oh. you want to encourage people, yes. speak to them kindly. Jazakallah khair. I think we heard that when we want to encourage people, people speak to them kindly. Jazakumullah khair razan. Beautiful. Mashallah. Tabarakallah. Sanya, go right ahead for your reflection as well. Uh, for me, the topic of today, it is linked to the, another topic about the knowledge. Because we can have the knowledge of uh, the the support of the of Allah if you know all the the, the quality, the name of uh, of Allah, and the, um, as well to have a community. Community, for example, if you're in a country, a non-Muslim country, have a community like the Al Maghrib Institute. Like today, we can give courage to be ourselves to um, to practice our religions. Thank you. Thank you. So, if I understood correctly, knowing the names of Allah is a source of courage. Knowing who Allah is. Beautiful. Uh, we have Hudayfa with their hand up as well. Jazakallah khair, Hudayfa, go ahead. Knowing, knowing, knowing the meaning of Allah's names and knowing the Quran meaning is a, is is good. Yes, very good. All right, Hafsa, what have you uh, taken? How, how about? You share some reflections. Salatimia, how dare you? You know, I don't like to, <laughs> to be put on the spot. Really? There's so many great reflections, but you know who I'm going to pass, pass the hot potato to? I'm going to pass it to Abdul Rahman. Okay, <laughs> sounds good. Yeah. Yeah, I knew that was coming as well. <laughs> yeah, it was coming. For sure it was coming. Absolutely. Um, mashallah, no, the, like the, the, the biggest reflection I have is... Um, when you see these stories of courage around the globe and you see that the fruits that it's had, right? Uh, there's so many people, and I know a lot of you on the call can say the same thing, but so many people in my community uh, here in Ohio who have either uh, become Muslim 
as a result of seeing the steadfastness of you know, of particular brothers and sisters in Palestine, or they've come back to their deen, right? Like they're people who weren't really paying attention to their Islam. It was not a major part of their lives. They didn't pray. They didn't, they didn't do the actions. And they said, you know what, if those people can stand and they can, you know, be inspired by this beautiful way of life that we have and that we've taken for granted, why can't I do the same thing? And it just reminds me that, alhamdulillah, there's always, even in the painful moments that we have, even in those things that bring us to tears and that we fight to change, nothing happens in this dunya that there's no wisdom in. There's always wisdom in what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allows to occur. And uh, and we see that part of that, wallahu a'lam, in just some of the, the ways that people are returning to their religion. And it just inspires me to just pay a bit more attention when we hear these stories, not to just pass over them as you know, stories that are just there for, you know, whatever reason, but they are there to inspire. And so that's, that's the biggest thing I've taken away. And may Allah inspire us all uh, through these reflections and through his words. Ameen. Ameen. Hear the eloquence? This is why I pick on him. <laughs> the next person in line is uh, Shamima. Sorry, sir, Shamim, go right ahead. Bismillah. Assalamu alaikum. Um, my reflection is um, I have benefited so much um from these um, beautiful um, lessons on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, with this one um, in particular, courage, I do believe, is something which should go hand in hand with humility. Um, and I think it's the only way which it can, can be truly um, absorbed, if anything, because it just brings the realness and the, um, the true essence of it, because there's just there's a lot to engulf from it but um alhamdulillah um i just want to say jazakallah to um to sister bilkis and sakina who encouraged me to um to, to to come on to this course in the first place so may allah reward them immensely uh -huh. um and it's because it's been such a benefit and all of the speakers on here so jazakallah uh, you see real courage is actually with humility because uh, you need courage because you realize that you are weak, you are in danger. So you put your trust in Allah and this is where you stay between hope and fear and you yeah. stay humble, right? Not courage not. is not synonymous to arrogance, right? Uh, or or thinking that I, أَرَّأَهُ stagna. That you know, I, I'm I'm fine on my own. I I can handle this myself. Mm -hmm. uh, no, it's with humility because you know you are very limited in your means, in your power, and it is only with Allah's tawfiq, with His help, that you can accomplish anything big or small. Alhamdulillah. Okay. 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 The next person I have in line is Aisha Gomda. Go right ahead, Aisha. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Um, the reflection I have for today is the opportunity that we have, especially living in non Muslim countries, where sometimes you are subconsciously um, unable to express your religion to the fullest. So, what I have taken from today is the opportunity to learn more that would enable me to be more courageous in expressing. And also live in Islam to the fullest. Jazakumullah. Well, Afiq, the next person I have in last in line is Afifa Darbadin. Go ahead, Afifa. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Wa alaikum wa rahmatullah. Uh, Bismillah wa salatu wa salam ala Rasulullah. I would like to share that in the face of bullying or in the face when we're bullied by people or peer pressure because peer pressure can also be a part of bullying uh, I remember that Allah says that do not fear them, fear me mm -hmm. Beautiful reflection. this is very important courage is needed to face bullying and also peer pressure yeah the next, person, uh, the next person we have in line is Tamanna. Tamanna, go right ahead. 
Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Jazakallah for this very important topic to bring on the table today. I would like to request to learn about some supplications that we can actually follow regularly to gain more courage because in today's world we are living to be a Muslim is already a courage because of the West and the pressure and all that. But Alhamdulillah, our deen is so beautiful. And of course, our brother, sister, children in Palestine is a big, big inspiration for us. And I would request some supplication or some ibadah that we can do regularly to nurture and increase that courage, inshallah. Says a Yeah. Um, you see, especially the morning and evening of Kav, um, you know, uh, they are for for strength and for protection. And when you know that you have recited your adhkar, Allah is there to protect you, right? Then then you will not be afraid. I remember I was very little and we were walking outside early in the morning after Fajr and there was a wild dog. And this is in Pakistan. Wild dogs are really wild, very dangerous. And I just remember it was just walking straight towards me and I was about to start screaming and you know, crying, and my mom, and my mom, at that time, she taught me, say, Bismillah al-ladhi la yadurru ma'asmihi shay'un fil ardi wa la fil samai wa huwa samir al-alim. And I repeated it, and alhamdulillah, since that day, like, it, it stuck, right? Because you don't know where danger or something scary is just going to jump towards you from. You, you, you don't know where it's going to come from. So you need Allah, Right, so Mashallah, there's so many apps, so many books uh, where you can access these morning and evening of Kaf. So say them consistently uh, in order to seek protection uh, and safety with Allah Azza wa Jal. The next, did Sana just go? I don't believe so. Right, the next person I have written in line is Sana Nakhvi. So Sana, go right ahead, Bismillah. Yes, Assalamu alaikum. And um, hope you are doing well. Uh, you will, your session is quite really very really good. And I just want to add, uh, as it's the uh, lesson today about the uh, courage and all the about shujad and all this. And the sheikh has also um, discussed uh, the uh, like uh, the incident and about talking about the Palestinians that how the how much courage they have. And I really when I see the videos and images and I really get really, really disappointed when I see them in such a poor situation. But yes, their courage and their belief is such strong that it's really, very really different from all of us, from the Muslim uh, Omar, right? They, I, I, I must say that they are unique. Uh, but the thing is that um, uh, I am a very positive person and I believe in Allah firmly. But when I see this so much like this, whenever I opened my social media accounts, there is uh, such horrible images and everywhere there is such horrible uh, images from the Palestinian brothers and sisters that uh, I lost my positivity in duas. So I hope if you could help me in that, but but I believe in Allah, but I really want uh, Allah I, to I would make their you, test easy. I encourage you to uh, watch the Why Me series by Dr. Umar Suleiman. Inshallah, it will answer many questions and help you uh, reignite that positivity, inshallah. All right, we'll uh, end here. Hafsa, you can start the Kahoot now, inshallah. Awesome sauce. Jazakumullah khair ustada and to everyone who shared, mashallah, such eloquent reflections on the topic of courage. Uh, and just, inshallah, we're going to be continuing our Ramadan 360 programming tomorrow. Ustada Barakallah Fiki, of course, again, at Forever, leading another amazing session, alhamdulillah, with us. As Ustada has just mentioned, we are going to be doing a, a Kahoot quiz. So look out for that. Anyone, was anyone here who's not, who wasn't here last week, last week to catch last week's Kahoot quiz? Is anyone new to Kahoot? Do I need to explain the, the the breakdown again? Okay, Saida, you are okay. So we have a couple of new people. Okay, so I'll go down the the 
the kind of the quick rundown of Kahoot as well, inshallah ta'ala. Um, thank you to Bilal for knowing that the reason I was distracted <laughs> was because I was for sure finishing off the quiz and adding uh, some pizzazz to it just now, alhamdulillah. So Kahoot is basically just a platform that we utilize to be able to um, give you guys the opportunity to test your knowledge, to see how much you've retained, uh, and to test you just on specific words or phrases or, or topics that uh, our instructors have been covering over the last few weeks. So it's been a couple of weeks now. Most of these questions are going to be connected to this last week's uh, talks and the things and, and the phrases that were coming out of them. And then some of them might be uh, from the week pre previous to that. So inshallah, you have a good chance. If you feel like you're getting ahead and, you know, make sure that you're you're kind of keeping on top of things from the very beginning because it's based on speed and accuracy of your responses. So however fast you submit and if they are the correct response, inshallah. Jazakum to those who dropped that link in the chat, the link to, uh, you know, to, to be participating in the quiz is kahoot.it. And I'm just going to pull open from my end, inshallah, the quiz itself so that we can get started, inshallah, and make sure that we are good to go. Let me get this started, done, and done. So there's going to be a, a pin that you have to put in. It's ideal if you have a sec separate device so that you can see my screen or you can split screen so that you can see the question easily and you can see the options to respond to as well, inshallah, easily too. Uh, and I'm just going to get it started from my end uh, and share my screen so that you guys can get ready to join. So let me know when you see it on your screen. It should be up just now. So it's just loading the game pin. The, the game pin is 79461134. So go to kahoot.it and put in the game pin 79461134. You can also use this QR code on the screen, inshallah, to join. Many of you, mashallah, have joined already. So that's great to see. Wow, whoa, whoa, that was fast. Okay, alhamdulillah. Uh, usually I read the names, but they're going so fast. I can barely see Asa Adriana, Iman, Hulia. Like you guys can see my screen, Fatima, Bilal, Zahra, Ghazal, Jazakum al-Khair to everyone who's coming through. This is a way for you to test yourself and we'll have a little bit of a prize, inshallah, for the winner at the end. Um, again, you have the opportunity all the way to the very end to see if you can uh, win the grand prize, inshallah, and just to see if you if, if you have been retaining your knowledge super well for the last couple of weeks. Obviously, especially with so many small talks, and I fall victim to this all the time, is that you hear something and it's like, oh, wow, that was great. And then if you don't implement it, if you don't note it, if you don't make it a part of your routine, it leaves your mind very quickly and it doesn't become something that impacts your behavior and it impacts your your daily uh, you know activity as a Muslim. So make sure that you are trying to, to retain your note taking, that you're going through sessions again if you're able to in the recording so that you're not missing any important uh, points inshallah and jazakum alaykum to all of you who are sharing your notes and gems. I didn't know you can make a, an emoji your your name. Try to, so that's easy to, to, to verify, try to do make your names for those who are, for future cahoots, please make them your actual name um, just so that we can make sure that the correct person wins the prize. Otherwise it could be ZK who, who wins and then someone named I don't know anything with a Z. Zach reaches out to us and says, oh, it was me. I was ZK and we won't have any way to clarify. Um, so just a heads up. And do take a screenshot at the end if you are the winner. Okay, we have enough people. We got 124 people in. I won't I won't uh, close off the room so people still have an opportunity to join. Once again, it's at kahoot.it. The pin is 7946134. If anyone is listening in uh, and can't see it, I don't know if people can rename to be honest, Solange. But let's thank you for dropping that that pin in the chat. But let's get started, inshallah, and test you guys uh, with these questions. Bismillah. So it's about 13 questions, I think, in total. Um, and don't let the pictures fool you. They're not the necessarily the correct answer the picture that's under each question so kahoot number two for ramadan 360 let's go three two one and the first question is there's an authentic hadith in surah bukhari if i de deprive my slave of his two beloved things and he remains patient i will let him enter paradise what are those two things is it food or money is it food and money is it beauty and hands is it house and food and is it two eyes Make sure that you are trying to read through all of the all of the responses. Some of them are slightly trickier questions. Shout out to Sister Mumina from the HQ staff who comes up with these phenomenal questions. Mashallah. Let's see who got them correct. And for the first answer, the correct answer was two eyes. So mabruk to those who got it right. I know it was a bit confusing. Don't worry, not all of them are going to be this difficult, inshallah. But let's see who made it. Sahro made it to the top of the scoreboard. Maheen is next. Paris, Sundas, and Solange. Okay, let's see who maintains their leads and who jumps on and disrupts the board. The next question is, according to the Quran, Allah responds to the muttaqin, the hujaj, the one who calls on him, or the one who gives charity. Slightly trickier, this one as well. 
Uh, again, you're not fully incorrect. Your, your answer might be correct, but you want to get the most correct answer uh, of the ones that are provided for each option. So let's see who gets it. Three, two, one, 119. 20 of you have responded. Most of you got that correct one who calls on him. I thought that picture was maybe a little bit suggestive, but alhamdulillah, good, glad to hear that most of you got it correct. And jazakallah to those who still participated. Let's see who's, oh, there we go. Mahin jumped. Paris jumped uh, another step. Safros on the board still. Bilal made it on the board. Nice to see Bilal on the board. Solange still holding on to fifth place. That's awesome. Let's see how who makes it to the end. So it's three of 12, 12 total questions, inshallah. When a person dies, his deed come to an end except for ongoing charity, knowledge that is benefited from, a righteous child who prays for him, or all. And we've been mentioning, subhanAllah, that the the, the Amagrib daily giving contributions that you guys are making this Ramadan uh, will contribute to all of these three. But which is correct in the... Oh, wait, Ashley, did I give that away? It's okay, I did it all the way, and most of you got it already. Alhamdulillah, the correct answer was all. When a person dies, his deeds come to an end except for... All of these things, ongoing charity, knowledge that benefits from someone that is benefited from and a righteous child who prays for him. Let's see the scoreboard. Whoa. Okay. Solange made it to the top. Bilal made a jump. Paris, Aisha, and O2 Dimar. Congratulations um, for making it to the scoreboard. Let's see question number four. What is the best way to know Allah? And the options are by paying zakah, by sending his names and attributes, by praying, by doing hajj. Those are your four options. You got 13 seconds on the clock, but most of you are going to need that time because you're wishing through these answers, mashallah. A couple more to go. Let's see who gets these correct. Three, two, one. And the correct answer is by studying his names and attributes. I hope the one thing you guys get out of this Ramadan 360 is a closeness to Allah through his names and attributes and hopefully the ability to memorize and implement them into your, your salah and into your du'as. And sorry, into your da'as. Um, the next, oh wow, Solange still holding. The, this is not a lot of disruption here. Just o, o, o to the Mar. I don't know how you say it. Uh, has made it one step up, and Aisha has made it to the board. Congratulations. Let's see what this looks like after a couple more questions. The next is, if a blessing comes through a person, you should be thankful to Allah, that person, both of the above, or none. I mean. I hope nobody selected none. <laughs> no ungrateful person <laughs> selected none as their answer. There, This is hopefully not a trick question, inshallah. Let's see the answers that you guys submitted. Is it a lot? Are you thankful to that person? Or are you thankful to both? Are you thankful to nobody? Masha, oh, see, okay, maybe it was a little tricky. Maybe some people clicked too quickly. So the answer is correct. You should be thankful to the person that, that, that gave you or provided you or benefited you. And of course, you should be thankful to Allah. Gratitude extends to both. Let's see if this tricked anybody. No, it did not. Okay, you guys held your you guys held your leads. Mashallah. Let's see who's next. Uh, inshallah to make it to the scoreboard. Why why was Prophet Isa Islam a barakah for his people? I couldn't think of any other image better for barakah. But the, the answers are he could bring the death. Oh, dead. Oh, yeah, dead back to life. He was a fountain of knowledge, fountain of knowledge. He would heal the blind or none of the above. Wow, I butchered all those. He could bring the dead back to life. He was a fountain of knowledge. He could heal the blind or none of the above. Why was he a baraka for his people? Yes, he was a fountain of knowledge is the correct response. Let's see uh, who made it to the... Oh, we did get a disruption. So Solange and Bilal, some of our OGs, are holding those leads. Um, I feel like I should disqualify you guys. You take way too many classes and you're attending all of these sessions. I feel like you guys have an advantage over everybody else. Uh, but Aisha, Abida, and Hannah, welcome to the board or welcome to jumping up higher in your uh, account. Which sea did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala split for Musa and Islam? Was it the Black Sea? Was it the Indian Ocean? Was it the Orion? Was it the Adrian? Orion? Is that a real sea? Um, or was it the Red Sea? Orion? Orion? Okay, anyways. Uh, 117 of you are very confident in your answers, have already submitted them. Let's see who gets this uh, this question correct, inshallah. And that was the Red Sea. That is correct. I'm glad nobody selected. Oh, one person. Sorry. Okay, mashallah. Most of you got that right. Congratulations. Let's see how the board looks like now. Oh, again, Bilal, I feel like disqualifying you if you win this thing, man. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Mashallah. Everybody else has held their... There's spots, mashallah. Let's see what the board looks like near the end. The next question is, how did Prophet Musa and Islam talk to Fir'aun? Did he talk with justified anger? Did he talk softly with patience? Did he talk with no concern? He wasn't bothered. Or did he talk, I guess, or all of the, uh, all of the above in different circumstances, he talked in different ways. Is this a tricky question? I don't know. Let's see what the scoreboard says. Let's see what people pick, inshallah. 
Again, if you do not like the questions, you should thank Sister Mumina, our amazing question asker. The, the answer correctly was softly with patience. And I'm glad you guys all, most of you, mashallah, caught that as well. Um, as a reminder, some of these exact phrases or mentions of these specific questions were from our previous classes, something that the instructor said during his talk. So Bilal still holding the lead. Solange, Aisha, Abida, and Zainab has made it to the board. Congratulations, Zainab. Let's see. You got three more opportunities, guys. When you're thankful for the blessings of Allah, uh, for the blessings Allah gave you, what happens? One, your blessings remain with you. Two, your blessings remain the same. Three, Allah takes your blessings away from you, imagine. And four, your blessings remain with you and you get more blessings. Let's see. Wow, you guys are really confident. Whoosh, whoosh, whoosh. I'm not keeping up with the chat, by the way. So I can't see while the chat messages is a little harder to see. So apologies if I if there's anything I'm missing there. The next, oh, so, yep, majority of you got them correctly. Alhamdulillah, your blessings remain with you and you get more blessings if you show gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And let's see, Bilal still holding that lead. That's a strong lead. Solange, Aisha, Zainab, and Mansura. Congratulations, mashallah, to those who've made it onto the board. We have two, three more opportunities to make it onto the board or to, to disrupt Bilal's strong lead. Reliance is the abada of the mind, body, heart, or hands. Reliance is the ibadah of the mind, body, heart, or hands. Let's see who gets that correct, inshallah. Don't think too, too hard. Remember, it's about speed, but it's also about accuracy. So do your best, inshallah, as quickly as you can. And let's see who got it. Yes, reliance is the ibadah of the heart. Some people were a little close with mind, but it is the ibadah of the heart, body, and hands. Unfortunately, no, nobody got body. I'm glad that that's the case. Let's see if that changed anything on the board. Ooh. Oh, did I just zoom in? How do I unzoom in? Okay. That was a bad idea. Okay. Oh, there we go. Bilal got uh, still the lead on the, on the scoreboard. Salaj, Aisha, Mansura made it to the top and Abdul Hasib made it to the top as well. I'm just trying to figure out how I can unzoom in to this screen so that we can see the rest of this thingy. Give me one quick second. Somebody, you know what's going to happen? Salaj is going to give me some pro tip that's going to fix all of this. <laughs> all right. I'm going to try to do next with it still zoomed in. All right, which one is true? Let's see your options. Uh, well, okay, well, you guys can read the options. Everything that's happened and will happen is documented by Allah. The documentation does not affect what we do. We must have faith in the father of Allah or all of the above. So I'm just too busy answering the questions, actually. Double tap with two fingers. Okay, oh, genius. Thank you, Zahra. That was awesome. Appreciate it. And the correct answer was all of the above are true. This is, again, where it comes into not clicking too quickly. All of the above were the correct answers. Congratulations to who got that right. Let's see if that, oh, that did it, didn't it, Bilal? Oops. Solange hit. I know, I see Abderman's expression. Oh, subhanAllah. Solange jumped to the top. Aisha jumped, Mansura jumped, Bilal and Abdul Hasib. This is this is why it's it's a fair game. Everyone, no matter how knowledgeable you are, has the opportunity to slip up and give everybody else a chance as well. Congratulations to those who's jumped. Let's see how many times is patience mentioned in the Quran. So this was mentioned during one of our talks in this past week. Is it mentioned less than 50 times? Is it mentioned 78 times? Is it mentioned 45 times? How many times is patience mentioned in the Quran? So let's see what the correct answer is and who gets it correct. Did this trick anybody? Did this disrupt the board? Last opportunity for this week. If you didn't make it this week, inshallah, you have another opportunity for next week's Kahoot. But in place number three, we have Abdul Hasib. Welcome back. I think I saw Abdul Hasib last week too, mashallah. And then we have number two, Mansura, And number one, huge mystery, I'm sure, is Solange. to Sister Solange. Congratulations for making it to the top of the scoreboard and being the winner of our Kahoot. The gift for this week was for anybody to be able to select from some of the programs that Amagrib has been highlighting this Ramadan, which is Amagrib Online, Amagrib Virtual, or Faith Essentials. So you are going to be able to pick whichever of those three. You could either take a class from Amagrib Online, a class from Amagrib Virtual, or Faith Essentials. It's totally up to you, Solange. I feel like you've been through all of them, mashallah, but mabruk. And please, can, you actually have my number. So you can just message me and let me know which one of the three you would like and which class you would like. Congratulations. And to all who participated participated. Look at that. Solange is cool as a cucumber, mashallah, um, for today's Kahoot quiz. Inshallah, you'll have another opportunity a couple more times uh, during this blessed month. Inshallah, please join us tomorrow for our next session uh, with Sheikh Omar Hadruj, 
Uh, I've lost it off the top of my head what the topic is, but I think I will get it in one second. Wisdom is our topic for tomorrow, inshallah. We look forward to catching you once again. And of course, for our Quran challenge, day number five as well, if you want to be, you know, benefit in that community of recitation with a beautiful uh, world-renowned instructor of the Quran. Of course, a shout out as always to our amazing sponsors and supporters at HHRD in the US, Islamic Relief in Canada, and Forgotten Women in the UK. And Jazakum Lakar to those who've been continuously giving to the Amagrib Daily Given campaign. We are now at the counter of 890 if you're listening to the recording if you haven't had a chance to give so far if you've been wait, waiting to get closer to the last 10 nights don't hesitate inshallah let's hit at least 900 in the next couple of hours inshallah yes the time goes so fast it's been a marathon of a day Jazak Mukha for spending it with me with our co-host brother Abdurrahman and our amazing speakers Sheikh Walid uh, Imam Wissam Usada Taymiyyah and Sheikh Abdur Nasir Jengda we're looking forward to another amazing day of Ramadan 360 with you all tomorrow for now take care stay happy stay healthy stay safe and assalamu alaikum wa